Dear God, please don't let me relapse and return to the evil that men do. Father God, I pray and ask that you help me to have mercy on others the same way I would want you to have mercy on me. Father God, I also ask that you help me to be quick to forgive and slow to get angry. Amen, amen, amen. These young dudes out here don't respect shit until you put the barrel in their ear and let the text spit. I just might catch a case on my next hit, remove their whole face on some special effect shit. So show respect, Drake, or I'ma have a flashback. Digging through the dresser like fuck it, where my mask at? Then mash back with the banger and damage shit and say fuck everything. I learned the name of management. Hop back on some east side manage shit and push a nigga's top back when I let the cannon spit. Start planning shit, premeditation. I'm in love with the streets again, rededication, casket or cremation when I shoot you down, I was built for the smoke like a hookah lounge, I keep big shit that sound like a bazooka sound, and I shoot quick and it ain't gotta be a hoop around, dear God please don't let me relapse, and return to the G-Rod with three straps, a ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out, spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps, dear God please don't let me relapse, and return to the G-Rod with the three straps, a ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out, spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps, gun on me, it ain't never for sure, Homie, I'm far from a bully, but I'm never a hoe. Get out of line, my Beretta will blow. Real talk, we can take the beef wherever we go. I bring it to your front door like I'm Uber Eats. I guarantee you listen up when this Ruger speaks. Plus, I maneuver through these streets like a ghost. And I'm handy with the heat, I cook a nigga like a roast. On me, homie, this is not a boast. I will still come through, boy, and stop a nigga's post. Play him close, man, air will ease it. Quickly off the waistband, man, and air will squeeze it. Leave you niggas laid out dead or paraplegic. Niggas playing in these streets while I'm very strategic. I come to your house dressed like the gas man. Shoot you nine times, leave you stretched by the trash can. Dear God, please don't let me relapse. And return to the G-Ride with three straps. A ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out. Spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps. Dear God, please don't let me relapse. And return to the G-Ride with three straps. A ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out. Spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps. I don't put shit on Facebook, I just holler in person. Put the pistol in your mouth while you holler in person all that shit you kept rehearsing and put on your live got your clap with the big four five your bitch nigga if you tell me to pull up i'ma do that that nigga who was whooping first nigga that i shoot at ski mask on my face bystanders be like who that i ain't with the talking bitch boy i thought you knew that leave his brains where my shoe at and bounce like i'm on a trampoline leave you laid out nigga like you camping on the scene if you want something sweet grab a peach or tangerine niggas won't smoke but fuck it i'ma land up handle steam ain't all with the beam you see the red dot with tug on this trick and It'll make your head pop. Blood pouring down to your shoes. Call it Red Sox. Your brains hanging all over your shoulders like some dreadlocks. Expect the gang of dead off. If they ever cross the line. The Lord said in the Bible, oh, revenge is mine. So I'm just trying to find a righteous path between the two. Before I lose control and do the shit I used to do, this being humble shit is new. I'm trying to turn the other cheek. But I ain't never been a bitch, so watch your mouth when you speak. Your mercy's what I seek, so I pray on bended knees. Don't let me get the K with the extended clip and squeeze. Lord, please. Dear God, please don't let me relapse and return to the G-Ride with three straps, a ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out, spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps. Dear God, please don't let me relapse and return to the G-Ride with three straps, a ski mask with the case, squeezing keys out, spraying everything from a nigga's brain to his kneecaps. All right, y'all. How y'all doing today? Uh-oh. What's that sound? Why am I having a crackly sound? What's going on here? Uh, man, what's going on here? Oh, uh, man. Something must happen. Anyway, y'all. Uh, oh, maybe it's my headphones. Oh, it's my headphones. Okay. Let me uh, let me get that straight. Uh, okay. There we go, y'all. All right. What's going on, y'all? Happy Sunday that the Lord has blessed us with. 
Ay, ay, ay. Holy smokes, y'all. First, let's take care of Brother Eric. Shout out to Brother Eric, man. Go over there and check him out. 16 to Life, the YouTube page. Check him out, man. He's got a lot of funny skits, stories, uh, music. He's got a lot of uh, just a lot of content over there, man. Go check him out. Good dude, man. Dude's page is blowing up, man. I remember when he only had like maybe uh, 2,800 people. And now he's got, man, over 60-something thousand, man. Holy smokes, man. Dude's blowing up, man. But, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Brother Eric's a good dude. He's a good dude, man. Go check him out. We're going to bring him back, man, and talk to him and see what where, where life is now for him uh, and what he's trying to do. Uh, we're trying to do some business together, man. It just hasn't uh, come together yet. But uh, hey, Brother Eric's a good dude, man. Go check him out. Uh, you That's 16 to Life, the YouTube page. Go check him out, man. Good dude. Good brother. Um, okay, that's Brother Eric, man. And, oh, we thank him for letting us use this song, by the way. Uh, he he gave me his permission to, uh, we could use the song as the opener. So shout out to Brother Eric, man. Appreciate you for that, man. All right, uh, that's Brother Eric, man. Go check him out. All right, uh, whoa. Whoa. Now, <clears throat> uh, shout, out to, shout out to Von Bryant, man, by the way, man. Von Bryant he was a little under the weather a couple of days ago, man. But uh, hopefully the brother's getting better, man. Hopefully, 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 I'm gonna need him real soon, man. I'm gonna need him, so gotta have him get to get 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 right, man. Um, but y'all, I, I don't know if y'all remember me telling y'all that 2024 was gonna be the year of revealing, man. Things were gonna be revealed. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, stuff that we didn't already know that wasn't common sense. We it's gonna be revealed, man. A lot of stuff's gonna be revealed. And you're going to have to make a decision with which way you going. Are you going with this way? Are you going with that way? you got to have to make a decision. I was saying that at the end of 2023 because I could see that, you know, um, so many things we thought was one way was really the other way, right? We, 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 we think things are one way, but they actually the other way. It's just a smoke screen in front of us because we want to believe what we seeing. Like somebody tell you they love you. You want to believe that they love you until a test, a trial comes, right? Trials come, right? We understand that Islam in Islam, trials are coming for you. In Christianity, we understand trials are coming for you. It's going to be trials. The Quran say, do men think they will be left alone on saying we believe and will not be tried? You think you're not going to be tried? You, th you think you, you're you going to be able to say, oh, I believe God, I believe in you, God, and then, you know, the, the test ain't going to come? A test is coming for all of us, right? Many tests are coming for all of us, right? Because, man, it's not even... Like a guy say, I'm going to test everybody. It's not even that. It's just the devil is running at any one of us. Any one of us. We are, those of us that say we believe in God, we are a priority for the devil and his henchmen and women. We are priorities. He's coming to get us, right? He can't let us spread. We are actually with the, you know, I tease Vaughn and, um, Rico and Bolo all the time about being the resistance for uh, Princella, but the, those of us that believe in God, we're the resistance for this world. They do not want us to spread that the the love of God to nobody. They don't want us to do that. So I mean, but we're gonna get into that, man. Let me check everybody in real quick, man. Then we're gonna get into everything and see what we're going to do, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I was trying to get in touch with my brother Bolo, but um, I think he might have got caught up, man. Maybe he's at church or so, whatever, man. Uh, I told him earlier, he, we, we had discussed they're doing the show earlier, but I'll do it, you know, until he get here. Um, let's check everybody in, and then we're going to get right to work, man. Um, I'm going to go back to the old, uh, the old system some kind of way. I got to figure that out. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to do in and out. I'm trying to do like two, three, two and a half hours, three hours, maybe tops, and we out of here. Uh, first on the docket is our resident sniper, Risa Neal. Say good evening. Hit the like button on the way in. Okay, let me tell you about Risa. Okay, Risa is our resident sniper. Okay, so what does that mean, Clarence? What do you mean, resident sniper? That means if you're coming over here to play some games, you might not get, you may not see it coming. 
right? <laughs> you may not see it coming, right? So just act like you want everybody to act at your dinner table. If you had some people visiting you and they were sitting at your dinner table, just act like how you would want them to act, right? You would act, you, you want somebody to act in front of your children, in front of your wife, just do the same here, man. That way, a person like Risa, she can just sit on the couch, chill. She don't have to even get involved. But if you make her get involved, she's going to get involved, right? Because she's trying to protect the, everybody, myself included, the, anybody comes up on the panel, and anybody in the chat, you know, she take that serious. So, you know, if you play games, man, she might take you out. You won't even see it coming. That's what I call a sniper, man, because you ain't going to see it coming. Poof, you're going to be gone out of here, right? <laughs> then what's going to happen, okay? You're going to say, Oh, one of your mods took me out, Clarence. I one of your mods took me out, right? Me, any Bond, and all the other mods are going to act like we don't know who took you out, right? <laughs> there won't even be a discussion between them because they already know, right? <laughs> they already know who took you out. I know who took you out, but I we all have to act like we don't know. Oh, really? Somebody took you out? Oh, okay, well, do you want to come back, right? <laughs> So that's yeah, so put me to the work, man. All the mods, all the mods will be watching, but it's you know, we got somebody that will that will really literally shoot first and ask questions later, right? Or better yet, shoot first. Don't ask no questions. Right? <laughs> so let's not put her to work, man. Let's leave her, let her have a good Saturday. I mean, excuse me, good Sunday, where she can just sit back and chill and relax. But don't get it twisted. You know, Risa will get to work if you put her to work. But shout out to Teresa Neal. Glad to have you to build assist. Who else in the building? Assistant. Uh, Excuse me, Brother Clarence. You talking about the Lord? I, you might see me today, Clarence. Okay. All right, Sister Idiot. Uh, Sister Idiot, another very important administrator we got here. Uh, who else in the building? Who else is in the building? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Von Bryan is in the building, man. Shout out to Von Bryan. Good to see you. In the building, my brother. Hope uh, you know you're feeling a lot better, man. Hope you uh, we we all pray for you, man. So hopefully you're feeling a lot better, man. Shout out to Von Bryan. He always says greetings, peace, joy, grace, and abundance, man. Class act, uh, brother Von Bryan. Who else is in the building? Uh oh, we got Vagoda, our Jewish brother from uh, another mother down there in uh, Israel. Shout to shout out to Vagoda, man. Vagoda was trying to tell me about the the holiday, the Jewish holiday. I was I I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying. See, he was trying to school me on that holiday, and I I wasn't really paying attention on that. I was I was thinking about the the holiday we were practicing here in America, but Vogoda was trying to um, school me on another uh, Jewish holiday. Man, I'm sorry about that, Vogoda. So, sorry about that, man. You were you were really once I thought about it, I went back and looked at the tape. I said, man, he was trying to tell me something, and then I saw, oh, okay, yeah, this, and then I looked it up. So uh, I apologize to you, Vagoda, because you was trying to put us up on that uh, on that holiday, man. So uh, shout out to you. Hope that holiday was good for you, man. Uh, and shout out to Vagoda, man. Um, who else in the building? Who else in the building? Sister Inya, our poetess, is in the building, man. Shout out to Sister Inya. Glad to have you in the building. She said, yeah, hi, Cloud. Watching. <laughs> yeah, man, because, man, Brother Clarence, man, I get controversial, man, so... You know, man, uh, I don't want to get you no trouble with this, Eddie, but, God, but had, glad to have you in the building, sis. Good to see you. If you get a chance to get some of this uh, sister's poetry, man, get some of it, man. Very uplifting, very uplifting. And that's what we need in today. We need some uplifting people. I Hopefully, I uplift some of you guys. I say something that uplift you and, and, and the people that come on my panel and in my chat. Hopefully, we uh, we we can say something to uplift you. And help you just, you know, hang on until uh, God reveals everything that he wants you to do to you, right? So, so for you. So, uh, shout out to you. And I got a lot of people, man, that can do that. So, any one of us can hit a home, hit one over the wall. Me, any, Vaughn, Risa, Patrice, Rico. Any one of us can hit one over the wall. So, so you know, hopefully any one of us have said something to you that, that helped you uh on your way bolo any one of us all right uh let's uh let's get right to work y'all uh thank you for going to appreciate you man for understanding man yeah I, I thought i knew what you was talking about but i do i really didn't once i looked it up i said man he, he's talking about a whole another holiday oh okay I, I get it now all right uh so anyway um 
let's uh let's get right to work, man. Let's get right to work. Okay, uh I gotta go over this Samuel. Now, last week, last week we went over this Samuel, right? We went over uh let's see, let me let's let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this. Last week we went over Samuel uh two and eleven through twelve, right? Now, what was the purpose of doing that? What was the purpose of, of us doing that? Well, my purpose for doing that was to try to show y'all that even one of God's beloved, most beloved, if one of God's most beloved and trusted men got caught up behind some sex, what ha- what could happen to you and me? What could happen to you and me? And what happens to us when we trust the wrong people, you could trust the wrong person, man, and you could put them in a, you know, we're not God. God could put somebody in a trusted role, have them fall down, and still, you know, everything's going to go the way God wants it to go. You're not God. I'm not God. We got to be very careful, man. We got to have our, we got to use our uh, what do you call that? Our intuition, which is really our God eye, looking at a person and seeing what they're about. Now, I've played before stuff like Fresh and Fit, uh, Kevin Samuels, these type of guys, these manosphere guys that say, "Hey, you ain't a man unless you're sleeping with a ton of women. You ain't you. You just ain't a real man if you if you got one wife and you sleeping with this one wife." You a sucker. That's that's their that's their uh, theology. That's their dogma, right? Are you just sleeping with your wife? <laughs> How you gonna call yourself a man? But if you sleeping with with your wife, or or some of y'all got multiple wives, if you sleeping with your multiple wives, and you not indulging other people, then hey. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you actually a men among, uh, you know, crooks, right? Scorch Earth. I'm gonna drop the link for the conversation. Yes, I am, brother. I'm waiting on. Uh, I'm waiting on our brother, beloved brother Bolo, to come through, man. Because I spoke about this last week, and I asked him. I said I want him to give his opinion on this subject this week, and so uh, I was trying to get in touch with him. I don't know what, you know, he, he might be in transition or he might be, you know, at church or whatever. I don't know where, where he's at. So, but you know, he'll check in when he get a minute. Oh, I didn't send the links out, man. Let me send the links out. Thank you, Scorch Dirt. You made me, um, see, now I got to send, first thing I got to do, uh, Scorch Dirt, is I have to send the links out to the home team, man. The home team has to get the links. And so let's get the home team to get the link. Now, all of them probably ain't going to come, right? Especially a guy like Rico. <laughs> Rico's like, <laughs> uh, he's like, hey, man, I, I see you guys at the rapture. But uh, other than that, <laughs> uh, I probably won't be in that religious discussion, man. I'll drop the link. Give me a uh, scorch. Give me about uh, give me about half an hour. Give me about half an hour, and I'll try to open this up. And then we can I can get you guys' opinion on this. Because the whole point is, Sometimes we can reconnect ourselves with people that's trying to, they, they, they claim that I'm a man, I'm the man, I'm the man. And because a bunch of, they have sex with random women, they consider themselves successful, right? We've all seen that. Like I said, I talked about uh, Fresh and Fit. I've talked about Kevin Samuels and most of these other red pill manosphere cats, Right. They many of them are, you know, like, hey, you're you're not nobody if you're, uh, you know, not having sex with random women, lots of sex with random women. Okay, let me let me let's 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 go through the the the, the bad parts, and then we're gonna get right into this David, uh, this Samuel, and we're gonna get in it right into King David. So, what is the what is the what is the upside of what, what, what what's the downside of having random sex in 2024 random unprotected sex with with random women what is the what is the downside for you as a man because they're, they're telling you to have even if it's protected what, what, what quote unquote protected 
what is the downside of having all this random sex with all these random women? Number one, one of the the number one random downside is it is a health risk. It is a huge health risk. You know, man, back in the day, man, in the 80s and 70s and 60s even, man, you got, uh, if you got a, uh, what do you call that, a venereal disease or a sexual disease, uh, you could go to the doctor, get a shot. Three days later, you were back in the game, right? Now look at you, man. Now look at you, man. They got stuff out there now, man. You're going to keep it with you. You're going to keep it with you, man. I mean, it's a bad situation, man. It's a bad situation. That's one. Number two is, what if you impregnate this woman? How's that going to go? You impregnate a random woman that you don't even know, and now you have to co-parent. You have to co-parent with a random person. You don't have the same values. You don't have the same uh, uh, understandings. You don't have the same approach to discipline. I mean, you have not. I mean, you you just had sex with this person. And we doing everything in reverse. You should get to know somebody before you open yourself to having sex with them. But what we doing now is we having sex with somebody before we get to know them because we don't want to get to know them. We don't want the responsibility of having to know who we had sex with. So we out here just having sex randomly. Oh, it's an ugly situation, man. Scorcher says, I believe the true essence of a man who has discipline even when he has free access to sex outside of the one he's married to. That's it. That's it. See, you can't, you can't say I'm a man. Cause like you said, Scorcher, a man has discipline, discipline. That means you have self-control, even though you have access to stuff that you would normally, uh, or a normal person might just go run into it because of desire. See, discipline is, your discipline trumps your desire. You may find this person attractive, but you know that, hey, that's not my place to go chasing that person. I, they, I might find them attractive. But that's not my place. I have somebody that I can go home to and have sex with. Or even if I don't, this is somebody else's husband. This is somebody else's uh, wife. That's why we're going to get into this King David story. We're going to get into this King David story because it's got a lot of twists in it. It got a lot of twists in it, man. Uh, shout out to Sim Simmer, man. I ain't seen you in a while, Sim. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Uh, Sim said, I don't trust random acting people in general. You know what Sam? I just think that people that chase, uh, that have addictions, you know, it's difficult to trust people that are addicted to something and people that are, are uh, addicted to sex are addicted to the, uh, to the, uh, um, what's it, what the, the, the dopamine of the sex. The whole the chase the the capture and the submission and all of that they're 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 uh, they're so wrapped up in that and that's their identity, right? That becomes their identity that they can subdue a woman and have sex with her, any random woman. And that that unfortunately uh, for those people they don't realize that into in 2024 that is you're basic you playing russian roulette you guys know what russian roulette is that's when you take a pistol a a a a, a um what do you call that a revolver pistol and you put one bullet in there you put one bullet in one of the uh the chambers and then you just spin it and then to everybody wants to play what they call chicken, right? Go look at the movie Malcolm X, right? He played Russian roulette. The dude said the 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 the, the light skinned dude came into the gang with Malcolm and all of the and the white girls and and, and shorty and all that. He he came in and he said, "Hey!" All of a sudden he said, "Hey, I'm I'm the boss." He looked around and said, "Ain't nobody you know tougher than me." He said, "I'm the boss. I'm taking over this group." So Malcolm said, oh, you are? This is before Malcolm made his transition, right? Malcolm was, a, you know, a thug in the street. 
So dude said, hey, I'm the boss. And Malcolm said, oh, really? He said, yeah, I'm the boss. I'm the boss of this thing. Because Malcolm's counting the money, right? He said, he said well, no, no, no. I'm the boss. So Malcolm said, oh, okay. Are, are we the boss? Okay. This is what we're going to do. He said, he put a he put a pistol, he put a bullet in the in the revolver and he put it on the table. He said, You shoot and I shoot. And the dude was like, huh? <laughs> He's like, huh? And Michael said, no, nah, no, nah, you want to be the boss? You want to be the boss? Pick up the gun. And dude was like, huh? Well, uh, I uh 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 he said, Michael said, no, nah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Boom. Right? Nothing happened. Michael put the gun back down on the table. He said, it's your turn. If you the boss, you got to all boss me. That's another subject we got to get into, y'all. If you want to be the boss, right? What they say in that movie, uh, let's do it again. You you got to bring ass to get ass, right? So, I mean, you can't just say I'm the boss. You got to be willing to knock out the, 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 the current boss to be the boss, right? <laughs> uh, but my point is, my point is, hey, you know, there's, you, can you really trust somebody who's always wants to get sex? I mean, in a, in a, in a, in a real viable, viable role, like, can you put this person as the CEO of your company? Would you put fresh and fit as the CEO of your company? Right. Could you trust somebody like that? See, the problem with, with a person that's always after sex, random sex, is that's that's what they're about. And if it come down to the fact of their righteousness over the sex, they're going to choose the sex. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me, though. But that's okay. I'm glad y'all here. Y'all can learn a little something. See, man, you know, <laughs> we'll go to chance. We'll go to the bullets, not the point. <laughs> Uh, Sim said, constant search for pleasure. They treat people like boom boxes, click, and then it's party time. See, but that's the thing, Sim. That's the thing, Sim. If you treat everybody like, um, if you, if you, excuse me, if you always searching for pleasure, pleasure is supposed to be a reward. Pleasure, pleasure is supposed to be a reward, right? Even when you have sex, when does the pleasure come? After you work. You got to work. You got to do the work to get to the pleasure, right? And then you get the release, and that's when you get the pleasure, right? But a lot of our, a lot of these young men, they're not learning how to work for pleasure. They're learning how to, uh, you know, just get pleasure wherever they can. They try to get pleasure every, you know, at every turn. They want pleasure at this turn. They want pleasure at that turn. They want pleasure everywhere. There's a book I've always told you guys about that you need to get called The Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh. You need to get this book. This book was written thousands of years before the Bible, but it, it, yet it has a lot of um, uh, similarities in the Bible, right? But you need to get this book, The Epic of Gilgamesh, where it talks about where there's a, per a person that's a king in there, and this man is just like this man. He get, he has, he he gets whatever he wants. He he comes into uh remember in the movie uh <laughs> Terminator when the when the central computer said to itself, I, hey, I don't need these humans, I'm alive. Right? The, the, basically the computer said, I'm a I'm I became it became self-aware. Like I got a I got a method of feeding myself, I got a method of getting the things done. I don't need the human intervention no more. Right? And then this, it, it, it decided to eliminate the humans. Right? <laughs> that's why Arnold Terminator, that was, that was the whole point of uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, right? He was out to terminate the people. Right? But that's a whole other thing. A whole other thing. Let's get back to the point. Why... Why, why is sex so bad? Why is random having random sex so bad? Right? Why is it why why is it so bad? Especially in America, man. Because number one, man, there's no there's no uh 
there's no uh what's what's the word i'm looking for there's no procedure or no way uh, there's there's no unified procedure of how to test for a person for random uh diseases right you can have sex with somebody man they could be loaded with diseases and you would never know because your thirstiness will let you walk right past any red flags you may see girl cough <laughs> right little discharges that you don't even you ain't even paying attention to girl just pull your head up so you don't even see little discharges you gotta check somebody out before you have sex with them and so checking them out probably means that you should be very very in uh uh, uh, uh invested in that person before you have sex in 2024 you putting your life on the line you really you literally are putting your life on the line having sex with random people that's why, y'all, we got to get to these young men, man. We got to get to them. We got to teach them. Well, what about the young women, Clarence? Trust me, to get to the better young men, the young women will have to uh, uh, adjust their philosophy. They ha- they're going to have to. They ain't going to be able to stay, you know, on the feminist tip, you know? Go to said it was written in the Bronze Age. Horror five will be, horror five will be accurate. The start of the Bronze Age. Bronze Age. Yeah, around there. Go to probably around there. You are probably right. Uh, Sim said uh, it's a landlord that live around me. He got three of his tenants pregnant. Oh man, they all stopped paying rent. Killed his own pot. This is what I'm talking about, Sim. Thank you for that, Sim. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff that we do to ourselves. Now you got three apartments. Probably, let's say you could probably get about fifteen hundred dollars for a pocket. Those three pregnancies cost him uh, forty five hundred dollars a month. Plus, now you got to pay <clears throat> child support per child. So it probably costs you not only forty five hundred dollars a month. It probably costs you probably you probably looking at let's say on the bare minimum is he's paying five hundred dollars a child. That's six grand a month you just cost yourself by dipping in the dip, dip, dobbing. Come on, man. Come on. We got to get to these young men. That's why, y'all, I'm always talking about the Urban Warrior Academy, man. We got to teach these young men stuff like this, man, because they don't know. They're out here listening to Fresh and Fit. Hey, just go random, you know, go, 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 you know, go, you know, hit and run. Just, you know, just go out there because you got to build up a number. You got to build up this number. Build up what number? What number do you have to build up? You're right, Risa. That was a bad cough, huh? <laughs> you got to, what number you got to build? I got to build up my, I got to build up my, uh, what do you call that? As a man, they telling you, you got to build up your uh, body count, right? Don't even, this is fresh and fit. Don't even talk to me unless you got 30 bodies. What? What is the value of these 30 bodies to, let's say you mess with somebody like myself and I throw out, let's say, let me throw a number out there. Let me say five bodies, maybe two, maybe three bodies, right? What, what is the benefit of having these 30, 50 bodies? What is the benefit? Are you and me going to walk into the bank and the bank and then bank managers going to say, okay, which one of y'all got the most bodies? I point to him. I point to you and say, hey, you, he got the most bodies. Is the bank manager going to say, oh, you got the most bodies? You got 50 bodies? Oh, let me just walk you over to the vault then, right? <laughs> let me walk you to the vault. Here, here's a, here's a hefty bag. Just get what you want. <laughs> no, you don't have to pay it back. Is that going to happen? Right? Is Experion going to say, hey, which one of you guys got the most bodies? Oh, you got the most bodies? Here, let me put two hundred dollars. Let me let me let me bump your credit score up two hundred. Really? Are you gonna walk into the 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 supermarket and when you get a, I got a basket, you got a basket, and we get our baskets up to the to the cat teller? Is the teller gonna say, okay, which one of you guys got the be, the 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 most bodies? And I go, oh, he does. Is the teller gonna say, "Oh, you got the most best, you got the most bodies"? Oh, just take it, sir. Just take that food out of here. 
You don't have to pay. We're going to make him the one with the less bodies pay. Is that going to happen? Me and you walk into the, the shoe store. I want some Jordans. You want some Jordans. We take the Jordans up to the front. Uh, the people at the front of the counter going to say, hey, uh, which one of you guys got the most bodies? Oh, you got the most bodies? Oh, sir, just take the Jordans. Or right, let me give you a 50% discount. Is that going to happen? I don't see. That's what I'm saying, man. I don't see the benefit in being able to say you got all them bodies. What you really saying when you say you got all them bodies is you wasted so much time, effort, and money to get them bodies. That's why you ain't where you want to be. The only way you could get anywhere is to talk to other suckers that need to, that, that are doing something like that. Man told me he had 50, 60, 70 bodies trying to impress me. I would instantly look at that. I would instantly look at you as a sucker. I'm like, man, wow. no wonder you ain't got nothing going on. You spending all your time, uh, you know, knocking boots. <laughs> And now you want to do some business with me? You want to do business with me? Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. We could talk. We could we could we could chop it up. But as far as me uh doing business with you? No. Same thing. I don't want to just restrict it to men. I'm saying same thing with women. A woman come and run around talking about she got all these bodies. <laughs> you think I'm really gonna do business with you? I do you like sorry for Goda. I do you like the 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 people that run the entertainment industry over here, which is the Jewish community. I would I would do you like I'll put you in a position where you can make yourself a little money, but you ain't no critical ish, you ain't a critical portion of the business. You just uh you you can easily be replaced, right? I'm not gonna put you in the CEO position. I'm gonna put you in the the, the shucking and jiving position. <laughs> I'm having all this sex with all these different people. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good love, everybody rocking all night. Who sang that song, uh, Risa? Who sang that song? Oh man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And our young men are sending themselves to hell. Like you said, Sam, they are attacking their own pockets. And they and they devaluing our women, right? Because our women are going and they they are they have a natural attraction to our men. Uh, and they have a natural and our men have a natural attraction to them. <laughs> We're gonna say, what? No, Jews run the entertainment industry. Uh, 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 well, I don't know about uh, in, in Israel, but over here, we'll go to, yes, the entertainment and the um, financial industries. Yes, they do. They are definitely, they definitely are, man. I'm, I'm not, you know, if, and if you don't believe me, we we'll go to go check out the CEOs of the most, the top five financial, uh, fi top five banking institutions. Go check those CEOs out and see what, see what, if you see their names, you Check out what you what heritage you think they may be from. Same thing in Metro MGM Metro Golden Goldwyn Mayor, right? <laughs> uh, Paramount. All these. Just go check it out. We'll go to go check it out. Don't just take my word for it because I'm not trying to attack the Jewish community at all. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is the truth. Just like I would say, who's uh, you know. Um, doing all this crime to black people, I would have to say black people are the in front of the line doing all the crime. So I'm just a tell the truth, right? So <laughs> go to say <sin>, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, brother, you know me, you know that I would never just attack somebody just because of their race or their religion or whatever. I'm just telling the truth about the situation, right? Just like I'm going to tell the truth about who is the ones that's uh, doing all this shucking and jiving, it's us. It's us black. When I say us black people, we out here, like uh, like uh, like Sim said, we 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 attacking our own pockets. We think we out here shucking and jiving, and get or or better yet, a a a new 
value system has come into play in the black community now where women's uh, promiscuity is somehow been uh, re retrofitted as some type of uh, base of power, right? You know, it used to be a time where promiscuity was looked down upon. It was looked down upon. And the reason why it was looked down upon is because the the, the value to men of women was in the sanctity of their vagina. I'm going to say that again. The value of men, I mean, this has been like this for, you know, forever, right? The value to men in a woman is the sanctity of the vagina, meaning that if I claim you as my woman, no other man should have access to your vagina, right? That is definitely not the case in America, right? The vows in America are just for show, right? Because if a person get up, if the person, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, is, they feel like they're not happy every moment of the time, they can just say, hey, forget it. Now, we're not, we're excluding abuse. We're excluding abuse and alienation. We're talking about a situation like all marriages have where there's, a, there's times where the marriage is not going right. There's times when things are backwards. There's times when there's challenges. That's going to happen in a long-term relationship and a marriage, right? But these guys out here, man, that ain't never been married or been married once and, and failed, they say, oh, no, they ain't no, you got to be happy every minute of the day. Single people ain't even happy every minute of the day. I'm not saying you should get married. I'm saying that's that is an option that's open to you but just like any other thing, you have to do it right. You can't buy a, 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 a 2024 Maserati and then put sugar in the tank. You have to do it, you have to do it right. You have to put the right kind of gas in it. You have to put the right kind of oil in it, right? For it to operate properly. A marriage is the same way. You have to put the right things into the marriage to make a marriage operate the right way. And one of the things you're going to need in a marriage, especially a long-term marriage, is humility, right? You can't, nobody is right 100% of the time. Just like nobody is wrong 100% of the time. No, nobody, that is impossible mathematically, right? My father, my father was a country boy. My father used to say, it, 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 the, he, said, he used to say, the sun shines on a dog ass uh, even, at least once a day, right? <laughs> he was a country boy, right? <laughs> but hey, man, nobody can be wrong all the time. But the only time we can, only time that you you will have problems, man, is trusting people that are that that are that are uh, consumed by uh, 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 you know their addictions. They're consumed. They're not. They they're not even. They they're not even open to suggestion about it. I mean, but that's what we do, y'all. We trust people that talk a good game, but they always leave breadcrumbs. They always leave breadcrumbs to what's, what's going on, right? They always leave breadcrumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could, I could, I'll be your CEO. I'll be your CEO. Hey, but I was in the club last night. I was in the, I was in the script bar last night. You mean your CEO of your company is hanging out in the script bar? What do you think is going to happen when your competition send somebody into that VIP room to get some secrets out of you, out of him? See how your business run, right? Is he going to give it up? Of course he's going to give it up. Of course he's going to give it up. Dudes that's running around having random sex, man, they'll do anything to get that number, to anything to boost their numbers, anything. They say whatever they gotta say, do whatever they gotta do. Remember Samson? Say whatever, man. 
just to get that number, get that, get that person, get that woman close to them. That man lost his life over that woman. How many of y'all have lost something over a woman, man? Time, money. You turned around, you're like, what the hell? All this for what? Don't get me wrong. Good sex is good sex. Don't get me wrong about that. But good sex should never over, over be over your righteousness, man. Even with your wife. Never should. You, you should never, you know, say, oh, because my wife is, you know, being really good sexually with me. I should trust her. You should trust her based on her behavior, based on her non-sexual behavior. Trust is built on non-sexual behavior. You cannot trust somebody based on a sexual behavior. Does that make sense, family? I can't trust somebody just because we had good sex together. That doesn't mean that they're trustworthy just because they had sex, good sex with me and they did some things that I like to do. Shout out to Scam Likely, by the way. If you haven't already subscribed to Scam Likely Show, get on over there and get a brother a shot, man. I can't, I can't, we're not, we're not here. Trust has to come from a non-sexual position. But so what do our young men do? The first thing they do, girl has sex or the girl put her hands on his, you know, private area or she do some other stuff to his private area, right? Next thing you know, you do dude telling the whole story, right? I got four hundred dollars in my bank account, in my checking account, and I got another thousand in my savings account. And I was gonna use to, you know, buy me a new car, and then, you know, I can pay this much money, and 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 and, and the chick is just, you know, <laughs> sorry, sisterhood. I'm I'm gonna say something that you guys probably gonna be mad at, but, you know, <laughs> this is my opinion. The sisterhood has a running uh calculated system in their head, right? When you start talking about those kind of numbers and they're the ones of them that are um that are that are actually doing business they're trying to do business with you. See this there's some of our sisters, they're not trying to do business with you. They trying to they're trying to do long term business with you, but not at your expense. They're trying to do business with you as a joint venture, right? Some of these sisters are out here trying to do business at your expense. So they see, okay, he got he got four hundred dollars in his checking. He got a thousand dollars in his in, in his um uh, savings. He can pay five hundred dollars a month for a car note plus another two for for uh for insurance. Huh. I if I can get him to get a cheaper car, he can get he can pay for my car. See, that's some some of our sisters they can do that math instantly while they hand is around your you know fun uh, stick. Right? They can do all that mathematics right there. So that's what I say. Doesn't you really find who you can trust when you got your pants up and not down? When the situation is some real serious situation. Now <laughs> now let's get to this uh let's get into this uh let's get into this uh uh because I wanna I want some of you guys to come up here and tell me about what what do you think. Can you trust somebody that's always talking about, oh man, I'm I busted all these women down. I bust this woman down, bust that woman down, bust these women. And they always talking about how they bust women down, right? Can you really trust somebody like that? I don't think so. I, I just I can't see it. But maybe one of y'all could tell me, oh Clarence, this ex Myron is trustworthy. Really. Myron ain't even using his real name, but he's trustworthy, right? <laughs> Fresh ain't even using his real name. But he trustworthy, right? I mean, them dudes are out the box right away, right? <laughs> They're not even using their real names. And I'm not saying they got to. I'm just saying they're giving bad advice. And then on top of that, they're giving you, they're giving you a name that you can't even use, right? I mean, not, not even their real name. They're not even standing on their own square, right? <laughs> Uh oh, hey y'all! I didn't do nothing, I good, <laughs> right? I was being good. <laughs> hey. Excuse me. <laughs> What's going on, sis? How you doing? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday in the, the day that the Lord has made for us. Happy mm. Sunday, sis. What's going on with you, girl? You are you're teaching right now. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. And like when you were giving those examples, it's like, yeah, somebody think, oh, hey, I'm looking for a job. Oh, well, if you've been sleeping with a lot of women. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh, yeah. Somebody, you hired. You hired to see me. Oh, man. You got you, the whole football team to see me. Oh, come on in. Right. <laughs> is that going to really happen? Logically, is that going to? No, of course not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It's um, like one of the things that I, at least respect about a man is like his ability to have some kind of discipline, you know what I'm saying? Like delayed gratification. Um, you know, when you're growing up or at least the men around me, um, when they would talk to me about relationships, it would be, um, how long can he go without just watch him to be able to go without anything, Okay. whatever that thing is, how does he handle not getting what he wants right away? Yeah. And that says a lot about what he would be willing to do, um, you know, to get the thing that he feels he has to have right now. Yeah. You know, even if it's a, a man that wants to be rich, <laughs> you know, right yeah. away, like what is he willing to do? What is he, you know, does he have integrity in how he wants to earn each of his dollars? Yeah. You know? So yeah. Like a, a man that doesn't have discipline in that, re in that regard, it's just, that is just not something that's, <laughs> that's not a, that's yeah. not an attractive attractive uh feature i'll put it that way yeah yeah hey y'all <laughs> well, hey, hey. no okay Perfect. um uh scorched earth scorch can what you up y'all can, can barely hear you i gotta put my earphones in hold on yeah you gotta put your, put your earphones in brother so we can get right to it <laughs> risa be good risa all right here we go all right um uh, uh, Scorched Earth, can you hear us now? Scorched. Hold on, I can't hear you guys. We can hear you. Oh, we can't yeah, we can hear you. Uh, you got to check back in. All right, uh, uh, Scam, what do you think, man? What's going on? Uh, what's good, uh, NA? By the way, let me say, you guys did a great job, man. When, when I was, uh, I looked at the, 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 the stream you guys did together. Great job. Great job. Yeah, she was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to the women that came and supported. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's cool that uh, a man and men and women can actually have a conversation without being all that dumb stuff, and all the fighting. Yeah. But, uh, um, what do you, well, what do you think, Scam? Uh, can you trust a man or woman that's always touting that they are? Have a you know they they they're always pushing the fact that they have this high body count. Um, I don't I don't beat up the high body count. I don't beat up the the talking points. I just say this much. Um, yeah, it's common. Men want to have sex and women want to have sex. Just like we want to eat what we want to eat, we want to have what we want to have and do what we want to do at any given time. There's a thing called discipline and scalability. So I'm not gonna beat up and say if you had sex one time, whoa, you're going to hell. What? You actually like that woman you wanted? No, um, that's kind of realistic. It's how you go about it. Are you planning on marrying, dating that woman and taking her serious? Does she want to date that man and take him serious? I mean, there's levels. Yeah, you want to be a virgin until you're married. Most people ain't going to make that. 99.99% .99 ain't making it. Okay, how about not doing it to your relationship? Cut it down to the 90, maybe to the 90%. Just don't be loose meat Larry or raw dog Ronnie out here doing what you ain't supposed to be doing. But it's scalable. So, um, I'm not going to go and judge everybody that's doing something. But don't be trying to justify sloppy behavior or expecting something. Men or women, uh -huh. you're doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. It, with bad intentions, bad faith, you know you don't like that woman. You're gonna stick your you just want to stick your meat and over her back to the streets. And you're lying to her, telling her, baby, I think you're the one. I want you to meet my daddy. Come on. There's women selling vagina on eBay. Like, nah, that's not, this is not what you do. Everything. Can you get away with a nickel and dime here and there? Yeah. But eventually, I mean, bad decisions become addictive and become your, your lifestyle. And eventually you wake up and just be so far off track, you don't know what you got going on. Now, to the fresh and fit thing, I don't get 
The dudes sit up here and talk about protecting providing all day, which is a dusty talking point. You didn't wear any protection, and you don't want to provide for the very baby or the woman that you're out here chasing after. How is it? You're talking about all oh, we got money. We get all the women, women's women's. We can get them all. You're telling me that was the only one that was left to go wrong. In? There was no school teachers, no nurses. The only thing out there was the Instagram bimbo. That was the only thing left, really. Sounds to me like they're just doing what they wanted to do. Somehow trying to justify it, saying one thing, doing another. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if it's just for clicks and views, but dust is dust. It just is what it is. And I'll pass the mic. All right. All right. Uh, Score search, can you hear us now? Yeah, I got you, man. I had to get my earphones uh, in, in order. All right, brother. Hey, you know, we all got the issues every now and then. All right, man. So uh what what's your uh opinion, man? What what do you think? Well, if we just talking about modern society thinking viewpoint, you already see that we gotta do what we want to do, period. With no with no with no accountability, no responsibility, no whatever. So but if we're looking at it from the spiritual biblical space of basis of what it of what it is or what it's on your thumbnail when you talk about uh Solomon and and, and, and and David, well, I trust no man that sits up there and says that they have a belief system or a following system of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the Bible, and they choose not to live what it is they preach. Nor do I trust trust any woman that claims the same thing. See, your first responsibility of discipline is for either sex comes to your relationship which you have with your father in heaven. If you say you believe in the teachings and, the, and you trying to follow that, not to say that you can't make a mistake, but it's when you choose to make your mistake into a lifestyle of continuous mistakes. Mm. That's when you become a hypocrite. Mm. That's when you become a doer of the world instead of a doer of the word. Mm. Whether you man or woman, we like to put a lot of this stuff on the men because of the fact that we like to walk around and say who we are that God has called to be. But we have no basis or no understanding or even doing the work of being that said such man that God has ordained all of us to be. We walk around and we expect these women to sit up there and do the things that they that we say that they're supposed to be doing and following and submitting unto us. But how in the hell would a woman, and I'm not talking about a married woman, I'm talking about in the societal terms and how it is that we use these words and we use these illustrations to say, well, you expect a woman, you as an unmarried man, expect a woman to follow and lead for you to follow you and submit to your will when you're not submitted unto God's will, because if you were submitted unto God and his teaching, you wouldn't be trying to bust her down and she's not your wife. Same thing goes for a woman. Why would you want to sit up there and subject yourself and submit yourself unto a man that is unwilling to give his life up for you and marry you and make you a proper woman? Because any woman that's walking around that, 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 that is, uh, that is not married, for the most part, they are considered to be unhusbanded. If they're not up under the authority of their father, which a lot of them seem to be not, because if they was, they would be following what it is that they father, they father or their brothers or those that's, that they consider to be the authority in their lives, they would be doing. But instead, you don't see that. You may, you may have drips and bits and pieces of it around, but it's not there. I mean, for the majority of it, it's not. So I have a hard time, but go ahead. Let me ask you something. Why do you think that is? Why do you think so many women are just trying to, you know, go at it, go it alone? Why do you, why do you think? Because it, 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 now everybody don't prescribe to what it is that I'm getting ready to say. So therefore, if it doesn't apply, let it fly, please. But for me and my biblical understanding and belief of what it is that I choose to follow, it goes back to the beginning of the Garden of Eden. Yeah. At the beginning, Eve wanted to be over Adam. She was tricked and duped by Satan 
to think that she can be something bigger than what it was that God had already put her up under. And it's been the same fight from then that what we see now. You have a lot of women that's sitting up there saying, yeah, I'm willing to submit to a man if he's A, B, C, D, and E, and F. But it's not, and like I tell a lot of them, how can you say you want to be submitted on that, but you're not even submitted to the word of God because you're sitting up there busting it down with this nigga and expecting for him to be something that, you, that you're not trying to be yourself? How can you say you're giving a man wife material and wife, think that a wife the things that a wife is supposed to do, but then you and you're wondering why this man won't marry you? Because you done gave up all your goods. And then for those of us that have made the mistake, or I won't even say a mistake, we done our, we did the things that we was, wasn't supposed to do. We gave up our virginity, whether you're a man or a woman, because man, just because of the fact that you quote unquote have the ability to do so doesn't mean that you get we get to walk around and act like we can go on out there and just throw our dingling around like it's like it's like it's free it's free money. No, we're supposed to commit our bodies as a living sacrifice to the father as well. We're not a zimp. But see, the thing is, when you have women that has found themselves in that position and they choose the same thing, I'm going to use Kevin Samuels as an analogy. I remember the night before he died, that night before he sat up there and got into it with a woman that was sitting up there saying, yeah, I had the kids, but I realized what it was that I was doing wrong. So I decided now that I was going to reserve myself until I got married this time. I was going to keep my body. And Kevin turned around and clowned her. Basically was like, you know, I already gave it up. What the hell are you sitting up? You know, that type of stuff. This is where the what scam likely like to say this is a dust. This is a stuff that is unseen and unclear. You want to know why women are doing this? Because when you go into the church houses, how many preachers you see actually talking about biblical submission of keeping your body under as a living sacrifice unto God? No, you sit up there, you hear all this stuff about women. You are powerful. You are raw, you, you can do, you don't need a man. Neither. When that's furthest from the truth, we need each other. And if we do it in a right, if we do it in a right biblical white right way, we wouldn't be having these conversations. Agreed. People that's married, you talking about how many times do you hear a pastor or any type of preacher really getting behind a pulpit and actually talking about you people that's married? Why y'all not having sex? Hmm. But you see a whole lot of women walking around there for the most part that single. And got kids with no father. Tell me what's wrong with that picture. We're living as what the society says that they're dictating instead of turning around, taking the biblical views of what most of us like to sit up there and claim that we are doing, but we're not living it. And that's the biggest problem. It's not just on the women, it's on us as men, too, because we walk like that said, man, we walk around here, man, and it's all about trying to get the get the money. And get as much coochie as we want to get. And that's what I meant by earlier about discipline. A, a, a true essence of a man to me is one that has an ability. Knows that he can go out there and have all the sex he want to have. But chooses to be disciplined enough regardless of whether he's getting it at home. From home. From the one that he's married to or not. That's the true essence. And I'm not saying that he's going to be perfect in it at all. Because hey, it is what it is. Sometimes it happens. But it's about the fact of you picking yourself up after you done what you done, asking God for forgiveness and then moving forward where you don't do it no more. What we fall into is we, to, we continue to make it a practice and a systematic thing to where we continually do it and thinking that God is going to continue to wink at what it is we're doing. Okay, brother, I'm going to have to cut you off right there. But uh, Go ahead, no, I'm done. Powerful, powerful, <laughs> powerful. I, uh, the man of the hour is here. Okay, that there's a man that I was requesting to be here to give his take on these verses. And so uh, we, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this situation because how the, the, the Bible, Quran, these are books that we're supposed to use to learn from other people's mistakes, right? We're supposed to learn from the mistakes that some, the the mistakes that they made and the good that they did and we're supposed to try to as much as we can uh point ourselves in the direction of the good and stay away from the bad 
So I was talking to my brother the other day and I said, you know what, brother, this is my take on this, but I would love to hear your take on this. Right. So he's here with us now. Brother Bolo, are you there? Hey, how's everybody doing? I am here. Oh, on? okay, cool, man. You know, Bolo, what's up, brother? Maybe you ought to turn the ringer up on that phone, man, because I don't know, man. I, I, I don't right. know. Okay, I'll turn it up. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe if you check one of those calls, you check, you know, you check those past calls, those recent calls, man, you might see, you might see a brother that, you know, tried to reach out to you, man. So, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, you just, I apologize. <laughs> hey, Bolo too busy, man. He don't never answer no texts or phone calls, man. Come on now. I will I'll give him that. He's busy. He's busy, man. He's got, he's, got, he's got some stuff going on, but but I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Okay. What, what I wanted him to do today, y'all, is I wanted him to go over this with me today, uh, this second Samuel. 11 and 12. Now, what is this about? Have you guys, has everybody on the panel ever heard of a man named King David and yep. a lady named Bathsheba? Yep. Just a little something. little something, right? <laughs> okay. So I asked this brother, I said, hey, I said, hey, bro, this is, this is my take on it, but, uh, you know, what is your take on it? And he said, well, I'll discuss it with you uh, that day. I said, oh, I said, okay, come on, we on Sunday. So we we here now. And I want to hear your take on it, brother. So Damn, would you like me to read it and you're going to break it down as we go? Or would you like to just read it yourself and break it down? What, which one would you like to have? You can read it and we can all go through it together. Okay, let's all go through it together, y'all. Uh, because we want to find out uh, how can we, you know, any one of us could fall into something. I, remember, I heard a lot of things that Squirt was saying. But at the same time, I was thinking, man, this is something that in a wicked world like we live in, in, anybody could fall into a trap. Even one of God's most beloved could fall into a trap. So the main thing is we got to be able to see the trap coming and be able to avoid the trap. Or like uh, Scorch was saying, once we find ourselves all in the mud, we got to we got to come to the realization that, hey, this ain't for me. I need to let me go back to the Lord. Just you ain't got to do a whole bunch for me. Just give me the solid mind to be able to walk out of this. So let's get to it. Okay, Sam, Second Samuel. For those of y'all that's keeping records, keeping track, Second Samuel eleven, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him. And all Israel, okay? Now, we ain't talking, when we say all Israel, but Brother Buller, are we talking about the men? We're talking about the men, right? Correct. Okay, so the men went out to the war, war front, right? Uh, right. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So normally, the king would be out fighting the war, leading the war front, right? But David, I guess he trusted Joab so much, he was he just he he, he stayed at the house, right? Mm -hmm. And it came and to pass in an even evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked up on the roof of the king's house. So it's a nighttime, right? And he, you know, he just taking an evening stroll on on the roof, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. If you believe that. <laughs> Anybody have any other things that might have been going on? <laughs> going on? Now, am I missing something? No, no, no. You ain't missing something. It wasn't, no, no, no. It wasn't premeditated. If that's, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm. It that's my point. Thing. It was just, hey, I just was going up and getting right. me some air, and then all of a sudden, holy smokes! But anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to it. And from the roof, he, David, saw a woman washing herself. My brother got some good eyes, right? You see all that at nighttime? And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, keep in mind the reason why she was on the roof um, washing herself, because a lot of the times, if you look at the historical um, historicity of it, you know, they, that's where they caught the rain, you know, on the roofs. So that's where people yeah. basically took showers or baths or whatever. 
Wait, may I ask something real quick? Yes, of um, course. Visual, visual. So I would assume just if I had to like visualize this, Sam, um, I'm Sam, David, where he was, his roof is definitely higher than what where Bathsheba lived, right? So he had this elevated view. Agreed. So even if she wasn't on the roof, like say if she was just like in her house and the window was open or something on the roof, so he would have that view. And that wouldn't be a view that he had just this first night, right? Right. Okay. So it just so happened this one particular night, he just happened to be out at the exact time. And and let's let's think about this, y'all. All the other men are at war. Now, she probably wouldn't be bathing outside or in an unrestricted area if the men were home, right? Okay. Because the chances okay. would probably be she would get seen, right? But all the men are gone. So okay. she's not like, oh, well, and she does, she has no clue that the, the king is going to be up right. at or the assumption, Or the assumption is the king is at war with all the other men. That, that's a possibility as well, right? But the, the point is, she didn't feel nobody was going to see her. Okay. Does, does, does everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, it's not major, yeah. but I think that's an important thing too. It's not like she was just out there like, oh, look, I see David looking. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let me go out there. Let me, let, me, let me rip my clothes off. Let me jump in the water right now. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, uh, and the water was, um, excuse me, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon, Sister Annie. Oh, my gosh. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Hey, bro, who's that? W what's up with her? And one said, is, uh, is, th is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Right? So dude said, hey, this is one of your people's wives. This is the wife of one of your people. Right? Because Uriah's out in the war. Huh? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came unto him and lay with her, for she was purified, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. Uh oh, what's going on here, Bola? What's what's going on here? Well, <laughs> <laughs> David sent some dudes over there, and, and 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 from what the scripture's saying, she it, it doesn't look like she had a choice, because took doesn't mean that you had a choice. No, no, thank you. But they they didn't they didn't they wasn't going for the no thank you. No. <laughs> so would that also Bolo? Would that also prescribe that basically what that word took? Could it also mean that maybe he raped her? <sighs> yeah, yeah, Bolo. Can you explain that? <laughs> oh my God. You do, man. Um. Well, you know, let's look up the word "took" because it depends on you know the. the yeah, context. okay. Because that when you say that, I mean it actually could apply that. That's why I asked. It, it, right. It depends on the context of you know how you're looking at "took." It could have been looked like, you know, David's men came with so much power. She didn't look like I had a decision. I, I had a choice. You know, I, I didn't have a choice. He's coming with these cats. These cats ain't trying to like the king want to see you. So, yeah, period. you know, it, it, it didn't look. And I think in that situation, a took would have been applied, implied to anybody. If David is sending his men to come check you. You know, it, it's not a, a situation of you having a decision. Well, that's man or a woman. I mean, it's just like if it was, yeah, I got you. But wait, you know, if he, if if I feel like I don't have a choice and you come get me and then well, I have to have sex with you, then, I mean. Well, we don't whatever, know. Whatever we, we call it, it's, it's well, the same we thing. We don't know if the situation was where he took the, the cookies. We know that she was brought to him, but we don't know what the situation was when, you know, when she actually got there and how it happened it doesn't give us that breakdown. Right. So we try not to imply, um, um, you know, our own breakdown to what the scripture is saying. When we read it, it says um, it says here and David sent messages and took her and she came in unto him. OK. Meaning came in unto him, comma, meaning she came to see him. Okay. And but he laid with her. Not by choice. 
Well, again, like I said, you know, the king is well, Bolo, Bolo, not to, 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 to help you out. And that's why I, I said when he first said, make, we don't know that, you know. It, no, it, no. It, yeah, I, I'm agreeing with you. But that's why I said what I said. Come on now. That ain't the first time he saw her up there. We all know he David was supposed to be out and about in the war. For some odd reason, he stayed around. The only reason why I'm going there with this is because when you read further on, which we haven't gotten into, right? The story of that B David and Bathsheba, it what it, it's almost as if as if, and this is how I read it, and this is how I kind of understood it. Bathsheba knew that David was out there looking at her. That wasn't the first time. That's why when they came, they came and took. That's why I asked the question. Because when you really look at it, it's like, okay, he knew what he did was an unforgivable sin when he laid with her because he knew that she was married. And when that and Whitland, when you read further on, you knew exactly what he did to hide the pregnancy. We're gonna get into that. So it ain't like that. yeah, so I, I ain't trying to go further into it, but I mean honestly. To me, to the net, to just to the natural visualization of, of the story, how it it, it goes, right. it's almost. I just can't see that. Well, then again, I, I get where you're coming from because then you look into the story of Tamar and in and, and her bro and her stepbrother and how that went about. So yeah, this but that goes to the to the to the uh, to the punishment of David doing what he did. Okay, no, no, never mind. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But, but, <laughs> we, but, 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 we do a lot, but we do a lot, and 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 we have to understand the context of of the time that they're living in. Agreed. It's different than yeah. how it is. You agree? So yeah. Agree. We do is we interject ourselves into the scripture, and that's where a lot of the understanding gets askew. Remember yeah, I got are. you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. My bad. Again, My bad. Sorry. <laughs> You know, the Lord gave us imaginations and we can, ima you know, we can imagine or put ourselves in that situation or whatever, you know, what it is. You know, it, it's like when you I'll give you an example, it's like the relationship between Moses and Pharaoh. You know, you ask certain people, some people say they had a good relationship before Moses became who he was. Some people will tell you he they had a bad relationship. Scriptures don't tell you the relationship that they had. Don't no, tell you. it doesn't. But yeah. people, you know, people, you know, hypothesize on this is how they were acting or whatever the situation might be. Let's go on what the scripture says. Now, we can, you know, if you and I are just pontificating and trying to figure things out, then absolutely we can, you know, use our imaginations and try to be in that situation. But the Lord clearly states, let's deal with what the word says. Now, are, is, is there scripture where it gives you room to open up that door? Absolutely, it does. You know, so here we have to, you know, look at the punctuations because those things are very important. So when it says mm -hmm. that's pertaining to her being uh, uh, being taken from where she was to where she is at this point. Now, does it say that David seen her all the time? It could have been. It could have been that Bathsheba knew that David was going. It could have been. But then you open up doors to questions that we can't answer. How did she know David was home? See, these are the questions that are going to be answered. How do we, how does she know? She wouldn't be True. information. Only her husband would, and he probably wouldn't because he's probably low on the um, on the totem pole, right? How did David know she was going to be on the roof? So all of these questions get opened and asked, and we can't answer it because we don't know. So we have to stick with what you know what the book says, and um, he did. Uh, they they took her. <laughs> Scripture says that. And she, <laughs> it is what it is. And she came in unto him, right? She came to see him and he lay with her. Doesn't say that he took it. Doesn't say that he didn't take it. Doesn't say that she wasn't interested in him. It doesn't say none of that. We can think about it. We can, the thing that we need to focus on is she was married and he was wrong. Mm -hmm. But I, can I just say this and then we can go to the next um, verse? <laughs> but I would, no, I just, because I think, like, I mean, I'm reading right on um, what the verse is saying. And it says that he took her. Um, it didn't say him, you know, he invited her. Um, he, you know, courted her. He didn't, it, is, it doesn't say that. So I'm reading like what the scripture is saying. And the only reason why to me that 
I want to make sure that I don't run away from like what this is, what this appears to be is because I think that like, even like, if you think like what the subject that we're talking about now, people try to blur the lines of, well, she said this, she said that, well, when the cops pull you over and she said, no, she said, no, you, well, her eyes said that, no, did, did she say no? So it's like, you know, she, what, I just think that there's some fairness to at least saying that she didn't just initiate this desire for David and come over there. And I, at least my thought would be that it's not something that she just, what it, there's nothing in here to imply that she was like this unfaithful woman to her husband. Um, she could have had this like power dynamic where she felt like she couldn't say no. So well. She okay. felt like she had to do it, even if even if she was interested, because, you know, there's some women that be like, oh, man, the king wants me. Oh, wow. You know, but even if she didn't want to, I don't know what kind of how comfortable she would have felt saying no. Can if I, she didn't. Let me let me kind of respond yeah. to that a little bit. Christine. Um, like I agree with Bolo. Like, that's a different time. Then. Mm. There is no R word at that time. Right. If a man. Mm -hmm. You're a woman, you're doing it. That's it. That's the culture. If you're a woman and a man says, I want to be with you, that's it. There's your resistance. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. What do you mean there was no R word when it talks about Tamar was? Her brother did it. What, what, I just want to understand what you mean by there was no. Even somebody in, other words, in other words, if a man wants you and he is, um, and you can see that he's, anointed by God does does that mean that you be you are you resisting him or are you resisting God see what I'm saying so I think that the average woman would say if this is the man of God and he wants me if I resist him I'm resisting God then why would God be not be pleased with this whole situation if, yeah. if that was I'm, of God I'm, that I'm was anointed it would be displeased. I'm talking about the the I'm talking about the the, the, the woman's perspective he know, like he he knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. But her, maybe she didn't have that kind of understanding at that point. And so therefore, because if you look at this, you look at the Islamic world out there, they have a lot of laws like that where a woman just has to keep her, you know, women have to come in the back, back of the mosque and they have to, you know, they have a lot of different Arabic law, you know, Arabic uh, values that they have imposed on Islam, right? They They've imposed those Arabic value. So when people see them, they see the Arab, they they see Islam. Instead of they see that not the Arab version. It's like it's like, for example, if you saw uh the 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 what are those people in the Mormons, you would say, that's not Christianity, that's a version of Christianity. But see, the people don't see that. See, that's what I'm saying. The people see this, and so I'm saying at that time, probably was even more, and he probably was able to get over on the fact that, hey, I'm the anointed one. I'm I'm the anointed one from God. So if you sleep with me, you sleep in, you're, you're pleasing God to please me. You If you please me, you pleasing God. That's the way she probably said. Now him as the man, knowing right from, knowing the difference, this is someone's husband. I mean, excuse me, this is somebody else's wife. Not only somebody else's wife, this is one of my soldier's wives. Can, can I can I interject something too? Yeah, I got a question too. Okay. Again, again, like I said, the, you know, the punctuations are very important, and to look at the semicolon that they have there, there's a reason why that's there, and then it goes back into commas, right? Oh. So when it says, "And David sent messengers," this is talking about the messengers, and took her. The messengers took her. Okay, now it's going into David, and she came in unto him. That's David. Him is David, and he laid with her. Now, I'm not going into whether he took it, whether she was flattered. I'm not going to speculate on that, you know, but we want to make sure that we keep in context that the tooker is pertaining to the servants or the messengers that was sent to her. Now, whether she felt that she didn't have a choice or, you know, she felt the power or she felt the, 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 the way the men were speaking really adamantly, that could have been. 
could have been. The king is asking for you. You going to see the king. You know, so, you know, they, you know, not having a choice can be implied. You know, you know if, if, if uh, the president is asking for Brother Clarence, you know, it, there isn't there isn't you saying no. You know, if, if the FBI show up to your crib, they didn't just come just to, to hear you say no. You know, in, in your mind, you probably can say no. But because of the force or the power that's being displayed in front of you, you ain't going to play that. So you just going to rock with it. You know, and, and you know, that's how you know, we look at it. You know, um, again, you have taken it. He could have. It's not off the. It's not off the table, you know. So well, he, I, oh, sorry. Uh, I, got, I got a question. Okay. So allegedly, this was somebody's wife. Not married. allegedly, he was someone's wife. Yeah, he was someone's wife. Okay. So what was that marriage? What was the kind of agreement and what kind of marriage is this? To where the man goes and gets this woman, marries her. But oh, we're getting married. But if any man wants to have you, he can just go ahead and do so. No. You're not well, looking you're, not, no, you're talking about the king, brother. No, or even the king. Right. You're talking about the king. Okay. So again, what we're doing, what we're doing is we're implying, we're, we're we're instilling our thought process on something that happened over two thousand years ago. No, not right. my thought process. I'm saying if back in that time right. this man and this woman said we are going to get married to each other, Correct. there were some kind of guidelines about, I assume. This woman not going out and sleeping with other men. Right. Like, what was marriage? Absolutely. Meaning David knew what the, what you're supposed to do with another man's wife and what you're not supposed to. And she knew right. you're not to mess with another man. So I don't see any innocence. There is no innocence on both of them, but we have to look at the catalyst. The catalyst was David. Being a possible coercion, I can see if you're saying that. No, David, David knew you, you have to understand something, right? Um, even in today's time, let's look at today's time, right? You know, women want to be provided for. And dudes know that. Dudes ain't oblivious to that fact that women are attracted to power, you know, and being, you know, protected and covered and all that stuff. So again, you know, we're we're, we're hypothesizing on you know the whole situation. David knew what it was. You know, David Cena. I mean, keep this in mind. He was walking around in his uh, castle or, you know, big crib, whatever you want to call it. And he saw Shorty. And he, she was she was fine. So he sent his messages and they made sure. And this is why they, they made sure to say it uh, 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 to David. And David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? They're making sure that they're saying it without being disrespectful. David will cut you in half. Is this not the daughter? You, you, you talking about Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, your man? Is that what you're talking about? That's who you want? And David sent messengers. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, my G. Go. Okay, we're talking possible coercion and not her just voluntarily saying, I want to sleep with this man. Mm -hmm. him possibly it doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. Doesn't say. And it may or may not have been safe. All we can say on this is David was out of line. Yeah. Definitely. Wait, now he was already, first of all, in this moment, this is not, we, we all, I think, agree, this was not David's shining moment. Absolutely. David, not only, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it would be, if, if David was willing to and did put Uriah, on front line and then tell troops to pull back. So he knew that that would cause him to die. Shout it's, not out to far, it's not far fetched for me to believe that David forcefully, not necessarily that the physical part of it had to be, but he knew that. Coerced. Well, coerced well, however, yeah, yeah. It does, however it was, it wasn't something that she just was just wanting to, to do. Well, look at it from this perspective, right? Because I can see where you're coming from, which I can, you know, it can be plausible. But look at it from this perspective. When Eve ate of the fruit, why didn't Adam, when the Lord inquired, why did Adam say, well, this is the woman you gave me? Why did he do that? Because he was taking responsibility from his, the responsibility of what it is that God told him to do. He took it off of himself and tried to place it at the feet of God. 
you mind saying the okay. question? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want you to answer it, Clement. Oh, you. you was asking her. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, my, my bad. <laughs> my question. <laughs> and it was when, when, when the Lord came and inquired of Adam, what did you do? Why did he respond the way he responded? And it and it's for, right. He was asking him. He not saying. And what did Adam do? Um. Oh, this this woman you 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 sent you you sent me. He didn't want to take accountability. So that's why, why to me, he, like for this. Why didn't he want to take accountability? I that's don't know that the word. I don't know that the word says it. So I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. People like a kid. You know. Did you? There you go. No. I mean, but like right here. Right. As, David. David did something not mm -hmm. just with taking. A married man's wife, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I've heard y'all say it because I don't. I'm not well versed enough to know if if the custom back then was that if you're a king, you can have any woman married or unmarried, so you no, have that right. All no, right, so if that, that, was, that was that was the point. Excuse me, guys. That mm -hmm. was the point I was bringing up the epic of Gilgamesh. That was the I'm whole, talking about in the scripture. Is that was is that what because no. you said like the the laws or how things were done at that time? Right. Is there something that we know from scripture that says that back in that time that if you were a king, you had full access to any woman, married or unmarried? No. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So with David inquiring and then knowing before he had summoned his men to go get her. Right. Now, I'm sure he didn't say, hey, go get just to go tell her I think that she cute. Um, They, they <laughs> clearly, you know, probably had a directive. Go get right. her. Right? right. So if right. they say go get her. Yeah, they were. If the, he said get her, then took is applicable to the order that they were given. So okay. took, me, took like you say, hey, I want to order surprise and they go pick it up from the back. You went and got it because I told you to go do that. So I'm not going to distance David from the took part because that was what they well, but, did because of him. Right. But the, the, the reason why I prefaced it and, and separated is it's easy to read that and think that, you know, when we talk about grape, when we talk about regardless of whether David gave his men instruction to go get her, that and took her was applicable to the men, not to him graping her. Now, again, there is no scripture. There is no law that says that a king can have any chick that he wants. But the point of me asking why did Adam do what he did is because he was afraid. Mm -hmm. Like any person, like when you brought up that the, the example of the child. Exactly. This is why David went as far as he did into the rabbit hole. Doesn't justify him. Wait, what was who, give there. me the who is afraid? Uh, David was afraid. David of he, thought that he go, can get away with this is king. That's right. what he thought. He wait, 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 I didn't, I didn't hear it. Say it again, Bolo. What I'm David sorry. was afraid of what he did, like a child. When a child does something, they break a glass or they break a vase that you said that you're not supposed to play with, and they break it. What do they try to do? Wait, and try to hide it. it. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm lining up what you're saying. Right. When it came to him telling his so his men to go get no no no. Came, no 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 when it came Wait. to David going down the rabbit hole, even having his man Uriah killed, right, putting him in a situation that be killed. The example that I'm trying to give you is when you are in a situation where you know you jacked up, all thought process of rationale goes out the window. You're looking for the easiest fix. And the example that you gave of a child is a perfect example of it, right? When a child breaks something, you told them not to play with the vase and they break it. They do their best to try and put it together with Hellman's glue. And you see all the glue and everything that's sticking out. You know, so again, it's not justification on it. You know, David jacked up. He messed up completely. He no, messed well, I'm, up. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey Bolo. Hey, Bolo, I guess quick I'm thing. trying to like think like no, no, let, let me finish. I, I think like at least where I'm following from like what Brother Clarence um like with this stream, it's you know what men do when it's f like for a woman, like the, the extreme that a person will go for a woman, for a woman, or you know, from you know, SEX. I don't know how you have to say it up here, but so David, because of his lust, his desire for this woman mm -hmm. that was taken, that's mm -hmm. married, mm -hmm. 
he it made these dominoes of effects. And you're right. Absolutely. The domino effect was that he did not show honor in respecting this man's mm -hmm. the matrimony of this man with this woman that he um, was conniving and trying to get him to, because there was no DNA test back then. Hey, you go in there and you won't know that it's that, you know, you, you can, now you'll think that that's your, your baby. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so all of that uh, having, you're right. You're right. The domino mm -hmm. effect mm -hmm. of the fact that you were so blinded by this woman and your desire and your lust, look where it gets you. You know what I'm saying? So like to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, at, look at it from the perspective. But of forget the woman. He was blinded by his lust. Mm -hmm. That's what he was blinded by. Mm -hmm. and, and, the purpose, mm -hmm. and the purpose of this story and why the Lord put it there is even a man after my own heart can get caught up. Caught up. That's right. And here go to, uh, and Bolo, an answer to your question when you said, you said he was not. Oh, this is okay. why the Lord says even the elect, the very elect it, could be fooled. If possible. Uh, yeah, if possible. Yeah. The ones that he chose, this world is so wicked that if I don't cover my elect, they can get fooled. So mm. what the Lord is trying to show you is, in the bigger picture, is anyone and everyone is susceptible to this madness that we call sin. That's here. right. Even the dude that I say is after my own heart. He got caught up. And look how far he went. This dude got up pregnant. Then try to tell a dude to go sleep with his wife, and then he was like, Wait, nah, but Bolo, we ain't got there yet. We ain't got there yet. My bad. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, but Bolo. You mean, you mean her husband. But, 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 but Bolo, to your quick to your question about him, why was he scared? Think about it. When you talk, you asked about Adam and Eve. Right. After she bit, think about it. What was it the commandment that he said, if you eat from this tree, from this particular tree, what would happen to you? What is it that Satan told around and told Eve that made her body into it? This was the same result. This is why Adam went down. I mean, not Adam. Uh, 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 David went down the rabbit hole because custom in that time. Which, I'll, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Custom in that time was what? Yeah. If you was found to be right. caught having sex with yeah. someone with another man's wife, what was supposed to be the the the, the correction of that? You yeah. were stoned. Yeah. yeah. But, but this is the point that I'm trying to make to you when, when when you say hysteria. Hysteria is a crazy thing, bro. You have to understand. Think think of this. Adam walked with God. Yep. Okay. That was the relationship he had. He walked with him. He knew this man. The man knew him, the creator. You really thought he didn't know? Yeah, but see, he was. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is the focus that I want us to have is even in knowing that this is the almighty, all knowing, all powerful in your mind, you still gonna lie. Yep, you're right because of your fear, right? Because of the fear that you have, opposed to just saying, Lord, I jacked up, I messed up. Will there be a punishment for it? Maybe. But but the thing is, we tend to focus more on the fear than on the forgiveness of God. Exactly. This That's is why good. Christ came. You do know what I'm saying? And this is what yeah. David is doing. David is trying to hide this. How do you hide it from the man that would tell you, listen, the Philistines, you're going to fall in the Philistines and you will be prosperous. He's telling you, you're going to win the war. Before David went to war, he spoke to the Lord. The Lord said, all right, man, hide behind this tree and then jump on him this way. And, and it happened the way it did. Hysteria, being in fear. Fear is the direct enemy to faith because fear allows you to do your own thing and step out of the covering of God. Bolo, I have if I may ask you something. You hear me, Bolo? I can hear you, Vigoda. How you doing, brother? I'm okay. At this phone now. <sighs> Uh, say, didn't you uh, say, I, I don't know if you said it or somebody else, but uh, fear, you're supposed to, according to your faith, you don't, you don't supposed to believe in God uh, because you are afraid what will happen to you in the afterlife, because you are afraid to go to hell? Who said that? I never said that. I don't, I don't think anybody said that today, Bogola. No, not today, but uh, I heard, I heard, uh, in, well, not. I don't say that people, somebody say it today, but in general, I heard the Christians say oh. that the reason they believe God because they don't want to end up in hell. So for they are, they believe come from, their belief come from fear. 
OL Bolo. I can't, I can't speak on that. My 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 love and my uh me accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior isn't uh the foundation isn't fair. And, yes, and but you do it because you don't want to go to hell, yes? Say it again. No, I do it for what he's done for me. Okay. I do it for the sacrifice that he gave me. That he did for me. That's why I do it. I think I understand what he's asking because you do have some people. Yeah, no, I understand yeah. what he's saying. I understand. Yeah, but and, and if you if your faith is based off fear, then you truly can't open up and understand the truth Good of point. who Christ is. Good point. Exactly. Good your point. Faith is based on fear, because that's not. I, I'll give you a movie. I don't know if you've ever seen Braveheart. You ever seen Braveheart? The movie with the Kablam and Mel Gibson. Yeah, Mel Gibson. That uh, Gibson. The creep, uh, creep Mel Gibson. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I saw parts of it and I heard about it. So and there was one part where the king, you know, he was talking to Mel Gibson, and Mel Gibson said, you know, says to you know to him. Well, the king said to Mel Gibson, the reason why the men follow me is because I can incarcerate their family. I could do whatever I want. The men follow you because they love you. When someone loves you, there is no debt. There is no place that they won't go for you. If I fear you, I'm only doing as much as I as I can. That's the difference. When I love somebody, I'll die for them. If I fear them, nah, G. I'm only going as far as I can go. And that's the difference. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's get back to the let's get back to the uh, because there's a lot, lot of wormholes here. Let's get back. I to, can, uh, uh, want to say something about uh, King David, and uh, you know, you forgot. Uh, I don't. I didn't hear you mention in the end of the day that he, uh, first of all, he still, according to the Bible, uh, you know, shall not steal. And of course, he has the blood of uh, the husband of Bathsheba on his hand. And that's what we're talking about right now. Vigoda. So shall not. Uh, you know what starts with, with the letter M. So she also shall not govern. So, you know, the people say uh, people uh, say that David is a holy man, but at the end of the day, he did uh, right uh, here and there. Uh, he, too, he did uh, he, he gone on uh, three uh, three of the Ten Commandments. Okay. All right, uh, that was our point. That's our whole point for go to that. Uh, yeah, just you know, David. Saying. David was beloved of God, but he, he, uh, he definitely made some missteps. So let's get back to the the scripture. Um, where were we? Ah, uh, here we. I think we were on number four. Uh, and David sent messengers and took her, right? And she came un uh, in unto him, and he lay with her. Now, couple chapters over a couple yeah a couple chapters over we find out about absalom and uh and the killing of uh and, and uh the killing of uh the guy that raped uh tamar right? his brother his stepbrother yes and that clearly says she was raped but yep. here watch the armor the so why why if 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 the same situation was happening here that happened there why isn't it described here? That's curious. That's just a question. Just a question. Doesn't mean that it didn't Wait, happen. What? Just a question. Because it clearly laid out that the lady got arped in the other chapter. But in this chapter, there's no mention of arp. There's no mention of resistance. There's no mention of anything like that. Just a, just a question. All right, let's continue. For she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. Right. Okay, so she was purified from her uncleanliness. I mean, when David, you know, decided to lay with her, you know, it was after she had had her monthly cycle, and she was done with that, and uh, you know, she was everything was good, and uh, she returned to the house. Right. Okay. Five. And the woman conceived. The woman conceived, and sent, and told David, and said. I am with child. Oh boy. <laughs> oh here's boy. A here's a crazy oh boy, thing. right? Here's a, here's a crazy <laughs> thing. I'm just telling you. Just, just what these random time. dudes do not want to hear. Right? And you are the father, right? And David sent to Joab saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. 
and Joab sent Uriah to David. Now, let's think about it for a minute, fellas. If you join somebody who's an employee of yours, wife, are you going to send for him? <laughs> hey, right? he's out on a sales mission, right? He's, on, he's going all over the, the 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 country, you know, selling the company, making you all kind of money. You gonna send for him? Hey, let's bring, bring this guy back. I, I need to talk to him. Most guys, if you sleep with somebody's wife, you don't want to see that guy, right? Hell no. Let's see what <laughs> they say. You're trying as to they say a plot is a foot. Right. <laughs> you're trying to cover your sin. You're going to send it on. And again, you know, preface, you know, keep in mind that God sees all. David knows this. He wrote Psalms. Right. So he sees all. He knows all. And and, and when you look at verse four and verse five, it doesn't tell you how much time passed. Nope. It sure doesn't. It doesn't tell you. So she tells you the next verse says, man, I'm with child. She would, She didn't go home and say, man, I'm pregnant. The same day, time passed. It, it time passed. David is yep. stewing on this. Like, damn, gee, I jacked up. So maybe he's thinking, maybe I might have got away with it. You know, maybe, you know. And then she comes back and says, yo, I'm pregnant. He's like, damn. Really? Psh, absolutely, okay. Vaughn. The plot thickens. I, I got to do something. I got to handle this because, you know, between four and five, God didn't step in yet. Right. So he's probably thinking, oh, I might be good. You know, I might be yeah. good. But then so, that, says, this is my point. <laughs> this is this is my point, y'all. This is why I want a bolo to come over here. Because this is my point. I think about it one way, he thinks about it another way, but it, I think it all ties in. But this is my point. Now the man has clearly sinned. Can we all agree that he has sinned? Right? Yep. Yeah. Right, whether she sinned or not, that's debatable. But he definitely sinned, right? How the hell she say, did uh, something bad? She didn't have a choice. That's my point, Vagoda. But that's debatable. That is debatable because we we aren't given that information whether she would agree to it or not agree to it. That information is being left. Hold out. up, though, Big Ed. Maybe, maybe not, because you just asked the question about Absalom in 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 in, in killing of, of of his his sister getting great. And you ask the question. That's why I prefaced my question in the beginning. How do we really know that she was actually whether she was or not? But because, it, be, but no, 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 no. What, how do we know that because of the fact it wasn't said that she was great, uh, uh, Bathsheba? But, but that's that's, that's, the, that's, that's the, the point. point the point is the point. The point is we're not focused. The focus ain't that. No, is, he asked him. No, what I'm saying is, but he, he, he just asked it. Yeah, he no, just asked that question. And no, that's I, it. That, no, I understand what oh. you're saying. And what happens is, again, these, you know, when we when we put ourselves in these scriptures, right, and start to add to it, these things can happen where we can make left turns and right turns, right? Because again, what Brother Clarence said, when you know, uh 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 um, oh, that's and, Brother Clarence. I thought that was Anna. My bad. How you doing, bro? <laughs> and, and, and you know, all of us black folks, we look alike, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sound alike, too. <laughs> Absalom did what he did because it, his sister was um, graped. You know, it was distinctly said. Right? It, it, you know, you, there was no question. Here, you know, there's questions, you know, there's doors open. But, what the, you know, it, it's like when we read the story of Job. You know, we focus so much on what Job got back when the focus really should be that the Lord was with him and all he needed was the Lord. That's when it. we look at it, when we look at it from man's perspective, this is where we go left. When we should be looking at it from God's perspective. And God's perspective is this dude who is my man jacked up. Not only did he just jack up, he kept on going. He didn't stop. He kept on going and kept on building and building to show you, you know, when you look at it, that the forgiveness that the father has is 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 unbounding. Yeah. The forgiveness that he has, that even though, don't get it twisted, you're still going to be punished. But the forgiveness that he has, for us to think that he can't forgive because that's why we continue doing what we're doing. You know, a lot of times people say, I'm so far down the rabbit hole, I'm, I might as well keep going. 
No, yeah. bro. No, sis, stop. Turn around. We all fall subject to sin. All of us do it. We, we ain't none of us not sub, you know susceptible to it. And that's yeah, the that point. Oh, sorry. I'm Nobody's sorry. perfect. Go ahead, Anne. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, the only point that like with the uh, with the took part that and this I'll leave it alone after this. Um, I I wasn't trying to imply that it was like that physical thing like that, right? Um, I think I don't know if y'all remember me saying because I think I said it on this panel um, a long time ago. A family member, a distant family member, had taken me somewhere to get something for my cheerleading stuff. And when we came, when he was bringing me back, um, he had like moved his hand way too close to me. Um, and I, it's like I froze. And he didn't, thank God that the truck, when he tried to turn around and take me down this dirt road, thank God that the truck stalled in, in some mud. Um, but he, there was a, there was a place where I did not feel like, even though he may not have like been violent with it, that I felt that I would have been afraid to not do whatever it was that he was going to do. Right. So there's this, um, and just to bring it back to like, were you talking about just with men today? Sometimes somebody may not realize that they're making somebody feel pressure to do something that they don't want to do and they're too afraid to say no right so that's the only thing i was saying like took like it's this thought that like wait will you come get me and bring me here and you're the king i don't know if i even if i wanted to say no that i could say no so i'm just trying to like bring it to the point of your stream today that like this is a good these there i think that there are some spots in all of this scripture that we can learn from or grow from or bring out some kind of like lessons or make people aware of some things. Right. That's something that for me at least stuck out. Now, could that be that I'm pouring me into that from hearing that? Yeah, it could be. It also could be accurate in what was and what she may have been feeling because there's no way that any of us like now could really know exactly why she did the thing that she did. Um, we just know that she didn't go knock on the door and say, David, hey, how you doing? Open, you know, we don't, we don't know. Like, we just don't know. But I just thought it was a good point of we don't know what she was feeling. But in the event that she did feel this way, men, please pay attention to things that you say and how just your presence and some of the ways that you may give the impression to women of like where they may feel helpless to say no. That's all I'll say. That's a good point, Sister, because a lot of men are so focused on what they want, they don't, they they're not paying attention to the other person's feelings or right. their their situation or how they're vibrating at that time, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so that is a good point. And uh, another good point, one, the one of the points I wanted to point out is what Bolo was saying earlier is that this thing gets deeper and deeper and deeper. So at now, at first, he just slept with the woman, right? But, yeah, he just shot up the club, right? Now there's a baby coming. Now there's going to be, there's solid evidence that he did the wrong, right? And sometimes we can sleep with somebody, no evidence will occur. No no visible evidence will be occur from, from it, right? So basically, a person can say, you slept with me, but you could deny it because there's no physical proof but now there's going to be physical proof of the wrong right mm -hmm. just like when we he went back to adam right there's the, them bitten out of apple well we say apples but let's just say fruit the the bitten off fruit is on the ground who bit this fruit off ain't nobody here but you and her <laughs> right i didn't do it i didn't do it you and her and it's two bitten off fruits out here. How can you hide that? I mean, you can lie and say, but eventually it's gonna come out. You can right? eat the fruit. But my point, my point being is, is that even somebody like David, Pagoda, even somebody like David, who who is supposed to be one of God's most beloved, even he got caught up. So 
if he could get caught up as one of God's most beloved, how about us? I feel like we beloved, but did he look at us like he looked at David? Maybe not so much. That don't mean we shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't follow his word. That doesn't mean that. That means that just, just because David gets more shine or David had more uh, of his uh uh, attention doesn't mean that we should just be like, well, we're not David, so we only going to follow with this one. No, we should follow the book, book as much as we can, as much as we can. But we can all get caught up out here. And so this is the lesson to show us, don't make it worse. Don't continue to go down the rabbit hole. Stop where you are. He could have stopped where he was, right? Now, Yeah, you know, you forgot to... one more thing. That if, I may, added, if I may add, this, this if he would have stopped where he was, hey, that could he he could have had to he would have had to own that. But of course, at that time, he probably would have had to marry her, or fight Epsilon, or some type. I mean, fight uh, uh, uh Uriah. He might have to he he might have to do something, follow the order of the day of how to handle that situation, right? But like Bolo was saying, he was. He was in fear of this evidence coming to light, right? So now we're going to get into the plot where David concocts this plot to hide the evidence. Can we move on, y'all? Wait a minute. I want to add yes. uh, something. To, I want to add something, if you okay. don't mind. Hurry up. You know, on. another stuff that we, lesson that we see in all of this, that, um, like uh, David, the David in the end of the day is a human being, like uh, everybody. Yeah, everybody is not perfect. That's uh, you know, if somebody, even uh, the Pope uh, is not perfect, uh, you know, we know we you do even know. Uh, the the Dalai Lama is not perfect. That's uh, even the mo the people that uh, seem to us like uh, the most uh, perfect and heavenly or a religiously spiritual, uh, most spiritual people, they are uh, like us and they can uh, do negative spins like us. That's a good point, Vogoda. And that's yeah. the point that we're trying to make here is that if these people that are allegedly so close to God can make these mistakes, what about us? Just a regular rank and file person trying to get their lives together. How about us? So we have to be on guard too. We have to be super on guard because this wickedness is out here, right? The, this this world has developed a way to to sensitize you to your uh, lower desires. That's why our your brain has to be trained to be disciplined. You have to be trained to be disciplined because when you're a child. You don't have to be disciplined. You just got to do what the people say, t tell you to do because they can overpower you. But at a certain point, you get to a point as a child. Well, now you could, you, you could. So that's when they have to start instilling discipline into you. Hey, don't run in the street. Why? What? 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 N not why. I just told you not to. Because when I tell you to not do something, this is going to protect you. But sometimes a kid don't realize that. So you got to, you got to use the fear of, the fear of your um, not being pleased with them as the, the 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 reason why they should listen because they may not understand the 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 the, the danger in what they're doing, right? So, what that but that's when discipline should start being instilled in us as children. Then we okay now you understand. Hey, don't do. Daddy said don't do this. Don't do it. Mama said don't do that. Don't do it. Not because, oh, well, I don't see no danger here, so I'm going to do it. No, 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 no. Even if you don't see no danger there, at one point there will be some danger there, and and you may not see it. So don't j just don't do it. Just follow that discipline. And now we come into grown being a grown man. Now nobody can overpower you. Now you really have to have discipline because you can you can make your own decisions. You can make your own movements. So nobody can overpower you. If you really want to do something, you can do it. If you put your mind to it, no matter how wicked it is, you could do it if you get caught up enough in your lower desires to do something like that. That's why we have to have discipline, especially as, as men, because we could change so many lives. He changed Bathsheba's life. He changed his life. He changed 
the uh, 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 the child's life. He changed Uriah's. Life. He changed a whole bunch of people's lives just by following his lower desires. Let's get into it, y'all. Let's get to it. Okay. Uh, and Uriah was to come unto him. David demanded of him how Joab did, how the people did, and how the war prospered, right? David's kind of fishing. Do we know what's going on? Let me let me ask him, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Right? Try to fish, you know, just try to see what's going on. See if he's aware of what's going on, right? Uriah's like, Man, everything's good, man. We out there, man. We getting it in, man. We getting it in. <laughs> Everything is good, baby. I'm telling you, Israel is the bomb ship. Nobody can sink us, baby. We out there, right? What? You're right, geek. Right? <laughs> Don't worry, y'all. Uh, Bola will tell me when I'm wrong. Right? <laughs> and I know you're yeah. telling them. Clarence, I know that you are talking about my ancestors, but I don't see what it uh, has to do with uh, modern day uh, stuff, but whatever. Hey, you, hey, 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 you guys was getting it in. You guys was getting it in, uh, Vagoda. Hey, we can't, it's documented right here, right? I, uh, and David said to Uriah, Go down to your house, man. Oh, man, you've been in the war, it's all good. Oh, man, we don't even need you out there no more. Hey, man, go on to your house, man. Wash your feet. What you wash? What's the point of washing your feet? That means you done. You ain't coming back. You ain't coming back out here. You, you, go relax. Kick your feet up. You are gonna be home for a while. So David told him, "Go home, wash your feet, man. Chill with your family, or with your wife, rather." And you and and uh, Uriah left out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. Right. So the king sent him this big uh, feast, in his house. Right. Hey man, he get he get full. He get to looking at his woman. He ain't seen his woman in well, I don't know six months, five months, whatever. He gonna be like, yeah, right. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> he can go home <laughs> with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. Yikes! And when they had told David saying, "Hey, Uriah." Uriah not, went not down to unto his house. Hey, hey, man! You, I, remember you sent you sent our boy to his house. Hey, he he stayed right here with your servant. Slept right in at the front door. They did like a uh, mirror crusher and uh, Bugs Bunny. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> David said unto Uriah, "Camest thou not from thy journey? Yeah, man, ain't you tired? You been out there, man, on the war front, man? Come on, I know you tired." Why then didn't thou go uh, down unto thine house? Why you Why you didn't go home? Don't you want to go see your wife? What's 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 the matter? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and drink? And to lie with my wife, as thou livest, and as thy soul liveth, I cannot do this thing. Uh oh, oh, we, we we might need Bolo's help again. Bolo, what's going on here? Is Bolo still with us? You can ask me if you want. So, so David, David was was testing the waters. David, you know, David was talking to him, seeing how he's doing, how's everything going. And uh, him out. Uriah, you know, Uriah is saying, you know, everything is going good. So he said, all right, so then, you know, go chill with the family or whatever. But Uriah was such a, a loyal uh, man to, to the cause. Good point. He slept, at, you know, he slept in the front. He didn't tell David that. He, you know, he slept with his men. And why? Because he's looking at it like, listen, my men are down there sleeping in tents. They in the war zone. I'm not going home to chill with my wife while these dudes are out there losing their lives. No, there's nothing, and there's nothing you can tell me. You know, right. he, when he says, I will not do this, this is what made David say, I got to kill this dude. <laughs> we ain't got there yet. We ain't got oh, there yet. Nice. We're we we about bad. to get there. You're about to get there. Clarence, you are acting like you are going to see some big spoilers to a movie. You know, everybody knows what happens. Yeah, my bad. You know, when you when you're scared, you're frightened. 
you, you know, all senses are, are heightened. You hear an ant walk. You know, you're seeing everything. So these words are really hitting them hard because he's like, damn, this dude, she's she pregnant. So again, it goes to show you the amount in the span of time that Israel is at war, that she comes up pregnant and probably showing her, you know, or something. She knows that she hasn't had her period or whatever the situation. I'm pregnant, my G. She knows her body. And he's telling him, you'll go. And he's like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm staying right here. And you can't force me to go. Basically, that's what he said. And I will not do this thing. All right, Bolo, uh, I think Scorch got a question. And then we're going to move on. Scorch? Scorch, are you there? I guess Scorch don't have a question. Hey, can you hear me? No, no. Hello? Okay. We can hear you. Okay, we can hear you, brother. You got a question? Okay. Yeah. Could it be? Just a question. That David was trying to get Uriah to go over there, back home, based off of exactly what Bolo said, not the lay with her, but to find that she's pregnant. And according to they to their customs back then, what would be the punishment for someone that you find pregnant and you know that you wasn't the father of that child? They would stone her, kill her, right? Yes. Could it be that that could be? Yeah, Stoney, could that be one of the reasons why David was also trying to send him there? I, I doubt that. I, I, let me answer that first, Bolo, and then let Bolo, I'll let Bolo answer that. I, I doubt that because I think that he really wanted to have the woman for him. He really wanted that woman. So I don't think he would I, I don't think he would have set her up to get stoned. I think he really not at the basis of him being found out himself, though. Think about it. If well, he don't went down that much of a rabbit hole the way he did. Come on. What but makes no, what it what, what, he 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 yes, he did go down a, that rabbit hole, but I think that he was more interested in the guy sleeping with the sleeping with the female and thinking the baby was his than than he was of of uh, well once him. again we already know it has been time in between there and then. we don't know how much time. We don't know the the, the makeup of her body it, it's it's just, she's even showing. I'm just saying, you know, it, could it be so far out the possibility? And the only reason why I ask that, because when you go in the New Testament, and when the, when the men brought the, the woman to, uh, that was caught in the act of adultery, and they was trying to trick Jesus, and he turned around and said, anyone among you who hasn't cast a first song, who hasn't seen cast the first song, and they all turned away. Well, that was more, but that was more of, you know, them, that was more of a direct conflict between the covenant of Moses and the covenant of Christ. But see, what I'm saying is this. I, I, no, no, I understand your point that you think what you're saying is could it out be the realm of right, out the tape that he, he wanted her to go find her pregnant and be in his rage and have her and kill her. Right. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. You Okay. Keep in mind that there's limit, you know, there's different madness hysteria you know from the understanding here david ain't that far in meaning he ain't that far crazy now what he's doing is crazy but he isn't that far out of touched touch if that makes sense okay. he's not that far because what he's telling him is yo go home man go chill and 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 in the words that he's saying he's like yo bro i'm not gonna go sleep with my wife you know what I'm saying? Because you, you have to understand what he's saying. The ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents, my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? Because that's what you're going to do. I haven't seen my wife in months. It has to be months at this point. And we, we have to, you know, again, you know, we don't think that she's showing because then, again, that would lay into what you're saying. He walks in, she she has a belly. You know, it, it, it's, you know, she's going to flip out. At this point, David, she's probably pregnant or she probably hasn't had a period. And David is saying, you'll go into her sleep with her. He, at least he's thinking this. And that, you know, uh, I can be off the, 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 uh, my check ain't going to get cashed. But this man <laughs> is like, nah, bro, I'm not doing that. Because at the end of the day, war is being cast on Israel. And I'm going to stay out there. I don't care how good we're doing until all of the men are home. 
I'm not going to stay home. I'm not going to, I'm not going to chill, Agreed. you know? Agreed. So again, you know, again, there's, there are certain things that are mentioned in the scriptures that we have to hold on to. So when he says, and to lie with my wife, and it ends there. It ends with that, right? To eat and drink and lie with my wife as thou livest as, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. So the last thing he said, so you want me to go eat? You want me to go drink and then you want me to go sleep with my wife? Man, check this out. Hell no, I ain't going. <laughs> I'm not going. And there's nothing you could tell me that's going to make me go. Hey, hey, Bolo, could it also be because he said that, that he was maybe red pill way, way before red pill actually, actually something up with that? I mean, just, I'm not even, you know, I know I'm just clouded, but I mean, honestly. I mean, when we really sit back, I mean, it's in, in a lot of these stories, yeah, we interject ourselves in them because of the fact that these stories are put in the Bible for us to actually sit there and look and understand that, you know what, this can easily be one of us because for a lot of it, it is us. But the thing. See, so therefore, it, but see, so therefore, what I'm saying is, what how could you, it, it? What do you mean huh? it's you? What do you exactly do you mean it's you? No, I said in a lot of ways, it is a lot of us in these situations. We look at these scriptures and then we sit up there and, we, and sometimes I just think that we, we look at it and say, okay, during this time, during this custom. But the thing is, isn't that the whole reason why God put these script, these these uh, these uh, these stories in the, in the Bible in the first place? For us to sit up there and look at it, understand that, hey, you do this, this is what you could be, David. Yeah, but, but God wants you. Here's here's the problem that we have. The problem that we have, and, and Brother Clarence and I was talking about this, right? And, and it's funny that you bring up that point. The problem that we have is when it comes to looking for a solution, we look for the solution through the eyes of man and not through the lens of God. That's the problem. See, the Lord is showing you two perspectives here. He's showing you man's solution. David is man. This is what David's solution is. When the solution should have been him repenting and going to God. Yeah. That's what this whole thing is about. Yeah. This whole thing is about is the Lord showing you. This is how it looks when you do something. And this is how it looks when you should have done it this way. You dig what I'm saying? So man getting caught up because there's different, you know, bullet points in this story that we can look at. Right. Um, that these guys here, they were close to the father, dog. Yeah. David talked with God. Moses spoke with God. Yeah. These men, these dudes were close to the father and they still were susceptible to sin. Yeah. Good point. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, so the, the, you know, I, brother, I, I, brother, my question wasn't about to try to no, absolve no, no, David or anything. You are. I'm not saying you are. I'm just oh, saying okay. what the, I'm, I'm prefacing what the scripture is here for. See, what we do is, we impart ourselves into the scripture and we pick out and plot and, and, and pluck what's good for us opposed to eating the whole meal from the perspective of God. I wasn't doing that either, though, I when I asked are. the question. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying what you do. When this word was given to man, it was given to man from man's perspective. It wasn't given to man from God's perspective. It just wasn't. Because at the end of the day, half the nonsense that goes on in the church, that goes on in the world, that go, it wouldn't happen. True. It wouldn't happen, right? You're right. Again, no, you're right. You know, we, we don't have a justice system. We have a legal system. And there's a difference between a justice system and a legal system. Good point. A justice system is predicated on righteousness because justice is the effect of righteousness. Right. Legal is okay, well, you know what? You got away with it because it was legal. It has nothing to do with righteousness at all. So the point of the matter is we need to look at things, and it's hard. This is not an easy thing to do because we were born in sin. So to stop something that's like second nature to you and stop and say, I have to look at it from God's perspective is very hard to do. That's not an easy thing to do. And that's what the father looks at, your discipline. He looks at how hard you try to, to stand up after you've fallen because you've been brought up this way. And now you come to find out the way you were brought up was wrong. Mm. Now what do you do? Do you continue making a left turn or do you go right? The choice is yours. 
So this is what he's doing with David, right? Every time he's giving David a choice, he's putting a choice in front of David. You, you, you slept with the chick. Okay, you sent her home. She comes back and says she's pregnant. Now, you could have repented. You know what I'm saying? And whatever punishment the Lord gives you, he gives you. Mm. Chose not to. Mm. You, you could have made that right turn. You call Uriah and you 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 talking nonsense. And, and this is this is for me, I think, at times. This is the hurt that comes with knowing the scripture. The hurt. Because the plot, the plotting that this dude had to do. Ooh. Think about it. Oh. The plotting that this man had to do at any given time, you could have stopped the plotting that this man had to do. And when you're in the scripture, you, when a person is talking, you just listening to them. You're like, this dude's been plotting this for a minute, man. God damn. This dude is crazy. This has been months. <laughs> since she's Months. He calls him and he's like, your house, the fight. How's the war going? Now we chilling. We doing this. We doing that. I right, then go. He could have confessed to, to, to Uriah, dude. I messed up. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Exactly. I mean, you, you would be more afraid of the father than you would be of Uriah. Uriah can't do nothing. You would either. think. You, you would think. think. Yeah. This, this goes into the hysteria of fear. This goes into the, the, the hysteria of fear. Fear makes you think that you can't be forgiven. So you might as well continue rocking on the way you rock it. And continue digging that hole. You know, so, so you know, at this point, he's saying to him, yo, dude, why ain't you go home? Nah, bro, let me break it down to you. You got Israel at war. The Ark of the Covenant is in war. Israel is at war and Judah abides in tents. And my Lord Joab, my leader, is out there. And the servants of the Lord are encamped in open fields. So you telling me to go to my crib, eat and drink, and sleep with my wife? As, as, you, are, as you stand here, that's what that means, as thou livest. As you stand in front of my face, King David, as thy soul liveth, that's not going to happen, bro. What do you do at that point? But that's where we're going to get to it, Babola. We're going to get to it. Okay. Because this was the first, the first plot is, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going you know, to get old boy, you know, a day pass getting back home, you know what I'm saying? You know, get him some food and he didn't have to get done eating, you know what I'm saying? He's going to be rubbing his stomach. He's going to see his wife running around. He ain't seen her in months. He's going to jump on her, right? Okay. So, and then, and then when he jump on his wife and she says, I'm with child, you know what I'm saying? He'll think that she's with child because of him. And he will have no, and, and my uh, being with her will be totally uh, covered up, right? That was the first Brother part. Clarence, Brother Clarence. Now, yeah. everything you just described, everything you just described, you tell me right now, you don't have people right now today doing that same type of plot. I think we all, we it, all know that. <laughs> I, I mean, so that, that I mean, so therefore, when Bolo says that it's kind of hard, you know, we like to interject ourselves. Well, I mean, my God, some of this that happened to some of us, and some no, of us no, may have no, plotted no, in no. doing what, this. What he's what he's saying to you, uh, Scorch. What he's saying to you is, David handled this. This is how David thought to handle this problem. David could have just at the beginning said, "Lord, I messed up." This he could have did that, but instead, he tried to handle it. it you know, in the manly, in the, you know, in the, in the, you know, earthly way, he tried to handle it this way. Which speaks to what, which speaks to directly to what it is that when, what, what, what Bola was saying, and even what I, even the comment I'm trying to make, when he says this, what do you call it, the schizophrenic or, what, or the, the, the mindset, the, what do you call it, Bolo? The uh, hysteria or something like that. Yeah, yeah. the mass hysteria of, of our thinking. But this is directly what some of us do as men and some of us do as women right here today. We don't, it's like when it's easy, just, but it, I mean, what I'm saying is, it's so easy to turn around and look at that story of David. Yeah, we know he was wrong. We know he could have done that. But at the end of the day, we're trying to investigate the very thing that he did and, 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 and to what? To what? We already turn around and look at some of the things that we've done in our own. 
I'm, I, here, here's it, what it, what, it, it's like. Here's the thing. Hold on, Bolo. Let him finish. Let him finish, Bolo. The reason why. The reason why. No, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. The Bolo, reason Bolo, why. Bolo, injecting, Bolo, oh, I'm sorry. Bolo, Bolo, Bolo. Let him. Let him finish. Let him get oh, it. Go ahead, Scott. No, no, uh, go ahead, Bolo. Because, uh, uh, I, yeah, no, because now I don't forget. I, it's okay. I, I know I know what Bolo's going so it's cool. Go ahead. No, no, no. Okay. The reason why we <laughs> inject, is injecting ourselves so quickly is a problem is because then we, this is where empathy and sympathy gets caught up into the situation. Right? Because when we inject ourselves into it, then we can say, I can understand why he did that. I can understand why she did that. When the Lord wants you to look at this from a perspective of you being outside of it and look at it for what it is, not for what it could have had or how it happened to you, you might have gone through something. I'm not saying you personally, you know, mm -hmm. I might have gone similar. And from me being so close to it, it could blind me from understanding the point that the and, and the and the lesson that the Lord wants me to learn from it. This is why it was written uh, for us, not us, right? So okay, the I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So last thing I'll say: the reason why I said that we're quick to interject was the portion when it when we were talking about the took, right? The 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 took mm -hmm. when, when David sent, um, the, the 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 messengers. There are scriptures that we can see ourselves in. You know, there are situations that will mirror situations that we have gone through in our life because this is the connection that we have right however the lord mm -hmm. the, you know the lord wants it's like i don't want you to go through what i went through but i want you to learn from how i fell from what i did uh, yeah exactly you know so and, and a lot of the times experiences now you mentioned yeah you mentioned the empathy and how the dangers of what it is. No, no, no. I just want to answer. I just want to ask him this. Go ahead. Scott, I need you to listen to me. Okay. Go ahead. You and me and Vagoda and Bolo and any, we have to let each other finish. We can't each jump on top of each other while we're talking. And so, because then the person has to restart all over again the next time we start talking. So, we got to let the person, um, and I know it's hard because you want to get them right there at the point that they're on. But we have to do it. So if we have to get a little notepad and write it down and have it right next to us, that's probably a better way of doing it. Because I don't want you. To get oh, no, no, I, I, see, I you got know. you. Yeah. See how you know me now? We we need to. No, I'm just it. saying. I understand. I'm sorry. I, I'm just saying. I understand. I got you. Okay. Thank I got you, brother. You. Okay. No problem. Right, so so uh, -huh. uh let's let's uh did anybody who was talking when I oh, I just interrupted that person. Can I say something before you go to the next point? Just uh, I, I mean, whoever was talking finished, but I just wanted before we go to the next reading of the scripture. No, no, go ahead, Sister Annie. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I I think that what I feel like what I'm supposed to get out of scripture when I read and what I want the Holy Spirit to do for me is that I'm supposed to relate to you know, to these stories, I'm supposed to be able to see what about these scriptures um, maybe I've experienced or I've grown from or, you know, that I can take in and pray that I'm able to grow from and resolve matters in a way that God would have me to do it, what he wants me to do. So like, even when we look mm -hmm. at like, first of all, um, Uriah's work ethics is awesome you know what i'm saying he's like you know uh, i'm staying out here with on. the team huh yeah that is a true uh team player right there yeah so like um me my work ethics are the same so i see like me seeing him and his work ethics um so that's something i can pull out of it um but doesn't mean that i just stay right there i want to be able to even in that like is that type of work ethics pleasing to god Yes, you know, but if that kind of work ethics doesn't allow me to still glorify God and to worship him, then that's where I need to see God in there, too. So I think at some point, like we we do, we we say, ah, oh, man, we we think about how a person may have felt in that situation. Like, I don't want to be so distanced from the experience of what I'm reading and the situations in Scripture that I'm, I'm that I have no empathy or 
um, trying to understand what a person may have been feeling that I may similarly have been feeling also and recognize where I maybe need to grow from that feeling like, oh, you know what? I do the same thing with, you know, that David did. You know, I may do something wrong and I, I'm, I'm in so deep. I don't know how to get out <laughs> mm. and I almost dig the hole even more. Mm. But how does God want me to handle something mm. like that? Oh, you know what? Repent. Stop. Stop where I can and just say, forgive me for that thing. And just, you know, mm. correct my steps going forward. So but that's mm. all I want to say. All right. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We, we got to get to this. We gotta get to twelve even. We ain't we ain't even halfway through eleven. <laughs> so we we got I got I gotta move on, y'all. I gotta move on. Okay, because we gotta finish this reading, right? I don't know how long Bolo's got to be here. Um okay, we at twelve, right? Uh and David said to Uriah, okay, so we already the first plot went nowhere, right? When we're gonna get him in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get him, we're gonna get him to sleep with his wife. And then when his wife says she she starts showing, he's gonna be like, Oh yeah, look at look at her. Look at little Uriah right there, little Uriah right there. Yeah. But it's really little David, right? But they, he, he go, he's gonna think it's little Uriah, right? But the, so the first plot was to cover it up, right? By having him go in there and sleep with uh with um uh, uh with his wife. But Uriah is a man of integrity, right? Hey, I, what kind of person you think I, he, he kind of was insulted. What, what kind of person you think I am? You think my brother's going to be out there on the front lines and I'm going to come home and eat and drink and sleep with my wife? I'm going to leave them out there. They out there risking their lives and I'm going to be here eating and drinking. Man, what's, what kind of dude you think I, he was kind of insulted. I, I ain't that type of dude. <laughs> yeah, sure as your life. No, I'm not that type of cat. I don't, I don't know what you was thinking, but that's not how I roll, right? Now David's even feeling worse, right? Because this is a dude of integrity. He got integrity, man. <laughs> so now he's like, oh, man. But the plot thickens. Okay, so so another, David came up with another plot, right? Okay, strike one, right? Here we go. And David said to Uriah, Terry here today, uh, also and tomorrow, and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. So David told him, Hey, look, man, if you hang around here one more day at my doorstep, you ain't gonna go home to your wife. I'm gonna send you back out to the war. <laughs> Uriah's like, Yeah, so and come on, come on with it. <laughs> so Uriah stayed out there one more, uh, two more days, right? And David said, David called him and he did eat and drink before him, right? So David's still trying to figure out, damn, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So David called him in. Hey, man, come on, have something to eat and drink with me. So he did eat and drink before him and he made him drunk. Now, David got him drunk. They said, man, we're going to get him drunk. Man, I could send him home to his wife. His wife would take care of him. Next thing you know, he'd be on top of her, pumping and sweating in the shed, right? And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, and he went not down to his eye. Even though he got the man drunk. As a drunkard, the man said, I, hey, I keep my integrity, even, even when I'm drunk. Now, I know that was killing David, right? David said, damn, strike two. Here's the next plot. Here's, here's where the real plot begins, right? <laughs> And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So now he wrote a note to Joab and sent it, G gave Uriah his own death sentence, basically, right? Handed it to him. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> um, and he wrote in the letter saying, set ye, ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Okay. So now, uh, strike one. The first first plan didn't go good, right? Hey, you're right. Go down and sleep with your wife. That didn't work. Okay, we're going to get him drunk. Got him drunk. He still didn't go down to his wife. Strike two. David felt like, hey, I have no choice. Do you really think he consulted the Lord, even though he had the Lord right there in his hand? He could have just easily went to the Lord. Hey, what should I do? I messed up. What should I do? I think that's what Bolo was trying to tell us, right? But he didn't do that. 
he decided, like a lot of us do now, like Scorch was making that point too, a lot of us do this now. We just say, we won't even consult God. We won't even consult the God in us. We just say, uh-oh, I got to hide this thing, right? That's what little kids do. They hide something, right? Because they don't know how to handle disappointing the, the, the people in charge of them. They don't want to disappoint you. They don't want to disappoint you, but they want to do what they want to do. So the, the way they figure they can do that is by hiding the evidence of their uh, disobedience. That's what, that's what most people do, right? They hide the evidence of their disobedience, right? Every, uh, as you look on the line, they, they try to find some way to do that. But how are you going to hide something from the God of the universe, really, right? And he, uh, so he, they wrote a letter, he wrote a letter, get handed Uriah his own death notice, right? And it came to pass when Joab re observed the city that he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew that valiant men were. Uh-oh, what's going on here? And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, Joab is looking over the, the battle, he looks at the city because they're trying to besiege it, right? That he, Joab, assigned who? Uriah, the man with the death notice, into a place where he knew that the valiant men were. In other words, what valiant men? The the other, the opponent is valiant men. He knew, he, he sent Uriah where the toughest fighters were for the other team, right? And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, right? And Uriah the Hittite died also, right? Because they sent him in, man. They sent him where the arrows were the heaviest, where they was, where they was, they, they, they were fighting up against the wall, right? The people, the, the, the archers were just taking them out, and then on top of that, the the other people were just dropping rocks on people. They just just drop rocks on somebody. You up that high, you just drop a rock on their head, boom, they're gone, right? <laughs> But uh, Uriah, the point is Uriah died also. Then Joab told David all these things concerning the war and charged the messenger saying, when thou hast made an end of telling all the matters in the war to the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, wherefore uh, approach ye so nigh into the city when ye did fight, knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Right? But they would say, man, you know, you know, that was a bad place to, uh, you know, uh, 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 fight the war from. You should have fought it from another position, right? He, that, this is what Joab is thinking that David will say. So he's telling the servant, when you tell him, tell him, hey, this, tell him that you ride past too. But here, uh, 21, who smote Abimelech, the son of Jer Jerubaseth, Jerubaseth, yeah. Uh, did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in Tibeth? Tibeth? Why went ye nigh, uh, nigh close to the wall? Then ye then say thou, they thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So he wanted to, hey, we 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 made some bad moves here, but your boy is gone. Your boy, <laughs> your boy is gone. Tell him that. That'll cheer him up, right? <laughs> so the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out to us in the field, and we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooters fr shot from the wall upon thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt you say unto Joab, let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thee, make thy battle more strong against the city and overthrow it and encourage thou him. Okay? So David's like, well, you know, we all, we all make a misstep, right? <laughs> we all make a misstep. Don't worry about it, Joab. Just go on out there, man, and just, you know, try again. Right, he basically encouraged him. Right, go ahead and try it again. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. So this is a good woman. She'd be like, "Oh well, cool. Hey, I'm carrying David's baby. Cool." She was torn. She was she was mourned for her husband. 
Yet at the same time, she's carrying the baby. She's carrying David's baby. She was she she was conflicted. She had she had some goodness about her. See, it didn't just say it, it, nothing about her. She she mourned for this man, right? Um, and when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. Wow. David didn't waste no time, right? <laughs> this is why I was disagreeing with you, Scorch, on that point where you were saying that she would be found and then stoned because he really wanted this chick. He was trying to figure out how he could get her. Uh, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How you going to walk out of that one? And the Lord sent Nathan. The prophet Nathan sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Listen, y'all, listen. The men had, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew to, up together with him and with his children. It did eat from his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was to him a daughter. I don't know. Man. That sounds like white folks, man. You got a lamb in the bed with you? Uh, sorry, Don, but that sounds like white folks right there. <laughs> and uh, there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his her own herd to dress for the way wayfaring man that was to come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was to come to him. Okay, what's going on here? What's going on here, Bolo? Bolo, you there? Uh, Bolo might be out. Must be a Rico with the... Must be out there. I can tell you what's happening. What is going on, Bogota? What's happening here? Okay, the, if I'm mistaken, the prophet guy is telling David a story in order for David to tell to uh, give uh, his own uh, to judge himself, or in, or if I will be more. Wait, 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 wait. You're getting ahead of the story. I'm talking about right here, verse four. And the traveler came unto the rich man. And he spared to take of his own flock and of his it's own herd to dress for it's the way of man what David did. Him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man. What's to come to him? What, what's got? What's going on right here? I I told you it's a metaphor for what uh, David uh, did. But I'm asking you what's going on right here in this verse. What uh, what's going on? A rich man with a lot of uh, sheep. Okay. Instead of uh, making a how you say it, kumzits. Well, not kumzits. A barbecue out of uh, one of his own goats, a uh, sheep. Then he took uh, the poor guy's uh, sheep basically all uh, what he has and make uh, a barbecue out of the a barbecue out of uh, that ship and not uh, one of his right everybody get that that's at least what i remember from uh, uh, what i uh, what uh, they wrote to me in school they told okay, us but did, I'm, school. I'm asking everybody else does everybody else get that wait rich, say it again i'm sorry a a traveler comes to the rich man Mm -hmm. And he spared to take of his own flock yeah. and of his own herd. Yeah. In other words, he said, "Nah, he's the, the 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 traveler was hungry, and he wanted to show that he was a good host. So he said, okay, I'll I'll feed this man.' But mm -hmm. instead of feeding him one of his own, he went and took the man, the poor man's mm -hmm. uh, lamb that he that was his only lamb." Mm -hmm. and he cooked it and dressed it up so that the traveler could eat that lamb. Can I this just mention something? No, I get the same thing. Can I just mention one thing real quick? Yes. That what David did, it wasn't even that it was like really done in secret too because people knew. Like Nathan knew. You know, so like it was like what he did, a lot of people could see too. So that probably added on another layer of like – David feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get out of this because like a lot of people no, know because God's know, God uh, is no supposed to know it, and uh, you know uh, in general uh, probably when he uh, put when he took uh, Bathsheba to his uh, court to his uh, to his place and uh, had his way with her, probably some people uh, 
you know, heard uh, what's going on in there, there in the next to that room or something. So, so you know, probably they were well, rumored. Well, let's, well, let's, let's stick with this right here. Let's mm -hmm. stay with this point right here. So, uh, Nathan is telling him, "Hey, man, there's one dude that has everything. Who, 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 who? Which, which out of you and Uriah, who's the who's the one that has everything? You, okay." You have many wives, right? This uh, this dude here, he uh, Uriah, he only had the one wife. Mm -hmm. Yet, instead of sleeping with your own wives, you went to after this man to eat to to get his wife. That's what Nathan is trying to break down to him. Right. And there came right. a traveler unto the rich man. He spared. Okay, I got that one. Okay, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this shall surely die. Right? David didn't even think about himself in the things mm -hmm. that he had done. Yet, mm -hmm. right? He's just saying, man, this dude did this dude dirty. Can, can I say something, dirty. Brother Clarence? Can yes, I sir. And that's the point of the, 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 the interjection of one into the scripture. Because what David just did, the man, Nathan gave him a story separate from what David was doing. Right? And David was pissed off and angry. Was he not? Yes. To the point where he said, this man should surely die. Yeah. Now, if, now if Nathan would have said, David, check this out. You know what you be doing, son? He probably wouldn't have gotten the full understanding of the disdain taste and understand what you did was wrong. In this situation here, there are times when we will feel the empathy and understand that this situation happened to me. However, here he wanted David to understand the totality of what he did. So he had to separate him from it. Does that make sense? Yes. But he wanted David to empathize with that traveling man in Absolutely. that school, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. separating him from it. Because right, it, right, it, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So now David is pissed off. They said, that dude got to die. Mm -hmm. and, then he, he got to die. <laughs> and then he turns around and says, it's you. You can't take it back now. You can't take it back. You done said it. And, and, and that's it. And that's what's so prolific of what Nathan did here. Right. He did it. He, 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 he was smooth. Nathan was smooth. All right. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. And, and, uh, and David's anger was kindled against the man. How dare he do something like that? That's terrible. He should be, you know, we should we should go get him right now. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Is David going in? Going in? He shall restore the lamb fourfold. Man, he got to kick in. You did something like that, man. You got to kick in. And then, uh, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh and Nathan said to David thou art the man <laughs> thus saith the Lord God of Israel I anointed thee king over Israel and I delivered thee out of the land out of the hand of Saul and I gave thee thy master's house I gave, I gave you your master's house think about that y'all think about that you got a master who you doing everything you, you working for and the master don't give you the house. God gives you the house. Who's going to take it from you? And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives. Holy smokes. Into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Like, man, I would have broke you off even more. But you showed me that you could handle this part. I left that alone. I left it right there. But if you needed more, I would have gave you more. <sighs> Wherefore hast thou despised the commandments of the Lord? Uh-oh. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife. 
and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And you see the beauty, you see the beauty of verse uh, 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 eight and nine. The verse eight is showing you that his grace and love has no bounds. All you right. needed to do is just ask. Right. And it would have been given to you. Then right. when you go into verse nine, right, the whole thing of verse 11, I don't want to hear nothing about Bathsheba. This is you. Right. All this is you. He didn't physically kill the man, but the Lord is saying you were the catalyst for it. Yeah. All of this started from you. All of it. I don't care about the end. I'm looking at the progenitor, and it was you. You're the father of all of this right here. All that happened because of you. And I could have gave you more. Yeah. If you wanted more, you had to do was ask. All you had to do was ask. All you had to do was ask. That's so all you had to do after everything else that I've given you. Wait, wait, hold on, Bolo. Just stop right there. What about you and me? What about us? How much more us? How, much How many more? of y'all today have asked for a better situation? How many of you have asked for it? See, you blaming the Lord. Lord, just come in and how come the Lord just don't come and fix my situation? Did you ask? You know why you don't ask? Because you know that when the Lord gives you something, he's going to require a little work behind it. You go, yeah, oh yeah, you're going to have to do something. He ain't like the devil. The devil's the one that's going to tell you, oh, you ain't got to do nothing. Bolo, you ain't got to do nothing. I got Maserati sitting out here. You ain't going to do nothing. You ain't got to do nothing to get it. And then you the, you find out the hook in that situation later. That's what the, that's how the devil play. Right? <laughs> right? Here's another part to that too, right? All the time when we want, we on the phone, Jack, calling the Lord. Lord, I need this. I need that. I need this. And then when he finally gives you what you need, what happens? I'm phone call stop. Now you're going to start doing your own thing. That's Ooh, when you know, good point. That's when you know something good is wrong. Point. You're no longer asking the Lord for everything. Right. We ask the Lord for everything. Lord, I need a new pair of sneakers. I need this. I need that. I need this. And then when it gets to that thing that you really want, you choose not to talk to him for it. Why? Because, you know, he ain't going to give it to you and he's going to see you. Yeah. So when you read a nine, what's the has despised the commandment of the Lord? Now, someone would say, well, what do you mean he despised the commandment of the Lord? Yeah, he did everything that he wasn't supposed to do. That's despising the commandment of the Lord. I told you not to turn around. She turned around and turned into a pillar of salt. That's despising the commandment of the Lord because he told you not to do something. This is where submission comes in. Man. This is submission. Man. Yeah. And what happens when, you know, again, we're all man, we all slip, we all fall. But the Lord is trying to show you, even my anointed. And their mistakes are big ones. See, uh, you know, the mistakes that th this dude made, <laughs> <laughs> he counted Israel too. Uh. When the Lord told him not to count Israel. The dude told his messenger, go count Israel. The messenger said, don't. The Lord said, he said, if you say something again, say something again. Uh. I got nothing to say, David. I'm going to go count uh, Hey, I'm going to do that. Do what you told me. Do it. <laughs> you know, sometimes people can get complacent, complacent when it comes to relationships also. Take it for granted. Great. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, again, time is our worst enemy. And, and, and this right here, you know, a lot of the times when we're the catalyst of something and things start to domino effect down the line, we tend not to say, well, it wasn't me that did this. It wasn't me that did that. Oh, but my man, it was because of you. The same way Uriah died, that was because of you. And you caused Ammon to sin. Mm. You caused Ammon to slay Uriah. Mm. So when you tell these dudes that, you know, you can cause your wife to cheat. What you mean? When you don't give a due benevolence. You can. Doesn't justify for it. Absolutely not. But you know who was the catalyst for it? You. Mm. You were. The reason why you in child support is because of the decisions you made. Mm, good point. We're quick. We're always quick to look at somebody else opposed to looking in that mirror. And it's hard to look at yourself because when you know that you're the problem, you have to then become a solution. And it's easier yeah. to say it's Brother Clarence's fault. But what 
did you bring to the table? Bolo. So, yeah, th that verse nine is crazy. Okay, so uh, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? Okay, man, Nathan is going in. Shout out to Nathan, man. Nathan was going in. Wait, wait, hold up, homie. Hold on, wait a minute. You getting at you getting at this dude I'm telling you about, but what about you? Let's look at what you did. You I'm actually talking about you. Huh? They were like, huh? What? Huh? <laughs> right? Wherefore I yeah, yeah, that despise the commandment of the Lord, man. Hey, man, homeboy, you done step way over the line. The line is here, you way over here to do this evil. Uh-oh. Nathan ain't holding back. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. You put him out there so that he can get his head lopped off. Not because he was, you thought it was going to, he, you was going to win that battle, but you knew he was going to get his head lopped off. You knew it. And that's why you put him in that position. Now, Therefore, the sword never shall never depart from thine house because thou hast de despised me. This is Nathan talking about the Lord and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. What does that mean? The sword shall never depart from thine house. What does that mean? What does that mean? Family. Why, why, is, why is Nathan telling him the sword shall never depart from his house? That means that that judgment of what he did to Uriah, that's always going to be there. The ripple effects will always. Exactly. Be that's always going to be there. Now, will God forgive him? God's going to forgive him, but he ain't going to be able to escape the wrath of doing that. That judgment is going to live with them. All right. And we're going to find out how we're going to find out how, uh, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up again, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. What? I'm gonna raise up evil against you in your own house? Holy smokes. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them to unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Ouch! How many of us want our wives laying down with our neighbors? Uh, I, that's a no thank you for Brother Clarence. <laughs> right? Uh, right? I don't care if I got two or three. I don't want my wife. I don't want my neighbors laying down with none of them, right? For thou didst, didst it secretly, right? You did all this game playing secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Why is he going to do this? Let's ask Bolo. Why is he going to do this? If if Bolo did it in secret, how come God's punishment is not going to be in secret? Because open rebuke is better than secret love. Ooh. Ooh. The Ooh. Lord, the Lord, and that's a scripture. I didn't make that up. That's a scripture. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord is <laughs> the Lord is using you as the example and as the lightning rod for the rest. Right. This is why the Lord tells you there is no respect of person. I don't care who you are, the greatest or the least. I'm going to use you as that learning, that learning a, a, a lesson for the yes. rest of the world. Right. So I'm going to use your faux pas to teach the others not to make that same faux pas. Right? In other words, we 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 going to let the people know how I feel about this right now. There ain't going to be no more secret. Right now, you guys are going to know, and you're going to see what may happen to you if you continue this life. Anyway, let's go. Uh, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. David find that Now David got it. 13 verses in. David got it now. Oh, man. Oh, snap. I messed up. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin and thou shalt not die. Okay, so David was worried. Hey, man, am I going to get taken out tonight? Nathan said, no, 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 no. It ain't going to be that easy. No, 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 no. You're going to have to live with this, and then others will see how you can live and walk, walk out of it. 
because God is a God of solutions. The God is a God of he wants you to be at ease. And he gives us. He gives us. Oh, go ahead. And he wants you to know he's a God of forgiving God. Yeah. But that don't mean you ain't going to that don't mean you ain't going to pay for what you did. That don't mean that you're not going to have to deal with the consequences of what you've done. That just means the Lord is going to be here for you to pull on when you're dealing with it. And then you got an opportunity to go forward. Right? But, but our people get stuck. Our people get stuck because we do these bad things and then we think, well, damn it, hell, you know what? I don't came this far. Right? I'm just going to continue to do it, right? I'm just going to continue to be a liar. I'm just going to continue to be a thief. I'm just going to continue to be, uh, you know, a pimp or whatever. I'm, I'm just going to continue to do these things, right? Instead of saying, God, help me. Help me. I am out of control. Please help me. I hope somebody listening to us today can get a little something out of what we're saying. David wasn't perfect, but he was one of God's beloved, and he fell. And he said, man, I have sinned. What is he saying? I have sinned against the Lord. That's him admitting that he went outside of his authority to chase his own desires, and he didn't keep the he, – he, he did despise the Lord. He did. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. He recognized that, Right? Sincerely, Brother Clarence. Exactly, yeah. sincerely. Right, he recognized that. And so that was him in his heart saying, man, I messed up. Now now what do I do? Okay. How be it? Because, the, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, right? What, what what's, what's going on? What do you mean? You By doing this, you gave great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. What does that? What does that mean? What, what, what do you mean? That means other people can, because of what you did, rumors are going to spread. People are going to talk. So I, I got to deal with you accordingly. And people going to say, "Well, if he did it, he's the king, and he's God's beloved. Mm -hmm. If he did it, I could do it. I did nothing happen to him. I guess you know God ain't tripping, right? Wrong." <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> so Nathan is telling him, "Hey, how be it? How, how be it? Because by the idea, you get great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. They're gonna say, man, just like they do now, just like they do today. They blame God and they blame God's word for the pastor who went and slept with the person's wife or the kid or whatever. They blame God's word. You get they giving these people. I mean, I'm not." I'm, I don't, uh, I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just saying what they did. Dr. York, Jim Jones, Eddie Long, they give the people say, well, I don't even need to believe in God because look what the people that believe in God are doing. They give the great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Oh, man. Not good, David. Not good. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, because this is something that Bolo just described to us a minute ago. So watch this. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth but he would not neither did he eat bread with them and it came to pass on the seventh day the child died and the servants of david feared to tell him that the child was dead for they said behold while the child was alive uh we spake unto him and he would not hearken unto our voice how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead so yeah man how's he gonna respond when we if we you know when we were he was barely coherent when we was trying to talk to him when the child was sick now the child is dead how's he gonna act is he just gonna just kill us all what, what's gonna happen right you know are we gonna be like a slave at a white lady's funeral 
<laughs> right? Who knows what's going to happen, right? All right, so, <laughs> but but David uh, saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. So he already kind of figured it out. Therefore, David said unto his servants, is the child dead? And he want a straight answer. And they said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. And then he came then he came to his own house, and when he required, they spread before him, and he did eat. Then, okay, here we go, gang. Then he said his servants unto him, what thing is this that thou hast done? So they asked him a question. What's going on? What's up? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead, wherefore shall, should I fast? Right? Why should I continue to fast? Can I bring him back again? No. I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Ah, okay, gang. Did you guys catch it? Did you guys catch it? Okay, here, let me explain. So the, the servants are saying, hey, you know, when the child was sick, you was fasting and wouldn't eat. Now that the child is dead, you're walking away from the Lord. Well, it says right here, it says right here, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he went to the Lord. You're talking about when he went up to the Lord? Yeah, yeah. He, he anointed himself, changed his apparel in 20, changed his apparel, went to the house of the Lord and worship. Mm -hmm. So David already had went to the Lord and worship. So he had handled that situation. Now, the service didn't know that he handled that situation or wasn't aware or perceived that he had handled that situation, that he had came to terms with that. That's the point. That, okay, that's the point. It was like he, he accepted it. He figured that if he would lament and, and go to the father, you know, while a kid was alive, that the father, you know. There was a chance. Father, right. There was a chance. But the there Lord, was a chance. The Lord but, didn't say what he was going to do. But what's the real lesson here? Man, when God say he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Boom. You can, you can fast and pray. and But if God say this how it's going, this how it's going. Wait. May I ask something? When you say that God said, are you saying that God said that he was going to take his child? Yes. Yeah. Where? Uh, let's see. Just a little bit up. Do, 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 I know do, do, that do, it do, said do. that Nathan gave the analogy, but is that that God told no, 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 Nathan? No, no, no. that? Okay, that's why. Remember, yes, Lord that's said, that's remember the Lord said there'll be death. Yes. 14. How be it that because by this deed thou has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And this is, is, that, Nathan. is that Nathan? Who's saying That's that? Nathan speaking on behalf of the Lord. He's the prophet, so he's speaking on behalf okay. of the Lord. Okay, okay. And then you, you, another thing, too, the reason why the Lord has taken this punishment with David is because David loved his people more than himself. See, any punishment that the Lord would have put on David, David would have took it. But he knew that it would hurt more for his people, anyone other than him. It would hurt more and that he would understand and learn it. Like everyone's punishment is different, applicable to that man or that woman. So, that, you know, you don't punish someone with something that you know that they want you to punish them in. You want them to understand and you want them to learn and not make this mistake anymore and when you look at it david always loved his people more than he loved himself always whether it was Wait, this was his child though absolutely it's part anything outside of him this is why the lord was so caught up in everything in your house is going to be off death shall be in your house brother your house is not going to recover from this at all because when you look at david when you read the story of david even when the Lord would punish him, he was like, I'd rather you punish me for my sin. But the Lord knows, nah, that's, you're not going to learn from that, my G. You're not, that, that's what you want. I'm, I'm not doing that. Because when he counted Israel, who did he punish? 
Israel. He punished Israel to punish him. So even with this, what did he do? He took his son to make him understand. So, you know, it's it, it, the law is no joke, man. This is why we tell people stop playing with them. This stop, is why playing with it. stop playing with them. We tell them that. Even, but, you know, when you get to Leviticus, he tells you stop playing with them. You got to read that, Brother Clarence. Leviticus chapter 10. Okay, we're gonna we we we'll, we'll get there. Maybe maybe we'll do that on another day. We're not maybe we will do it on another day. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I need to go. It's uh, getting late. Okay. So, well, I wanted to talk to you about uh, what you said earlier. Which was? Yeah, but, uh, what? Wait, uh, what did I say earlier? What pissed me off in the comments? <laughs> what when I said about the Jews? Yes, about the entertainment. Oh, oh. oh Bogota, that's just documented, man. You can go look that up. I mean, that's that's nothing to argue I with. I have something to tell you about that, but what, uh, you will talk about it in another uh, time. But in any okay. case, you All ask right. me, you ask me if, if my mistake, you know, I uh, finished uh, my last assignment I, in my uh, that I need for my degree in my university. So now I have a spa more spare time. Just oh, okay. If, uh, Good for you. you yeah. For you. If, uh, so if you want uh, to check, uh, so if uh, you have questions for me and you want me to check something and get back to you, then uh, go for it. But in any case, uh, what I want to say, oh, you you asked me uh, in our last uh, conversation about what's going on here right now. Yeah. But maybe you ask me if there is somebody that you uh, of the from the Arab side that you can uh, speak uh, to, I don't have somebody like that. But uh, you know, there is a mo there is a videos about uh, uh, I forgot his name. His nickname is the Green Prince. He's uh, a member. Is uh, a son of one of the founders of Hamas that is right now uh, speaking about the war, okay. and he's doing interviews. So there is a video of him in the Doctor Phil show. Talk about uh, the conflict and the war right now with two mu other Muslim women. So I'm yeah. going to send that uh, the, a link to that uh, video in the, the mail. It will definitely interest you what he has to say. Okay. Yeah. Remember, a son of a, a, I'm giving you a link to the to a video of a son of a, of one of the founders of Hamas, not some YouTuber, not some dumb blogger. Okay. Okay. Not some crazy liberal. Okay, so okay. you want somebody? You wanted somebody from their side. Here you have. But in okay. any case, I'm going to sleep now. So have a wonderful day, guys. <laughs> All right, or Begoda, in my man, case, take care. evening. Good night, Bogota. All right, Good take night. care, man. All right, that was our brother Bogota, man. That's our brother from Israel, man. Shout out to him, man. Uh, I think it's. I think he's 13 hours ahead of us. So it's like what? Maybe 3 a.m. Over here, over here for him. All right, uh, let's continue, y'all. Uh, let's continue. We got to get through this 12, man. Uh, shout to Black Man Unfiltered, by the way. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where are we now? We are, uh, uh, let's see, we're at uh, uh, 24. And David confronted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her and she bore a son. So this is after the first baby passed. Now she bear another son, right? So now we know at least nine months have passed, right? Because she bore, she bore the son. See, sometimes like uh, um, Bolo was telling us, we don't get the time frame. We got to just be smart and realize, okay, this is, is, this is at least been nine months. Uh, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. Now, Solomon was born on the right foot, so they, he, the Lord loved him, right? Put a pin in that, man, because we all know about Solomon. All right, and he sent by the hand of Nathan, the prophet, and he called his name Jedidia. Jedidia, because of the Lord. And Joab Jedediah. fought against Jedediah. Jedediah. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Jedediah. And Joab fought against Rabbi of the children of Ammon and took the royal city. So Joab finally got the city. Now, this all this time has passed. This these been a couple of years, right? Uh, and Joab sent messengers to David and said, 
I have fought against Rabbi and to have taken the city of waters. Now, therefore, gather the rest of the people together and encamp, in, encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name, right? Say, hey, I ain't going to have no choice. If you don't send some people to back me up, I'm going to have to take this thing in my own name. David said, no problem, bruh. Got some people on the way already. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to worry about the you don't have to worry about the city named Joab. We got some people on the way already. All the people gathered and went to Rabbi and fought against it and took it. And uh he took their king's crown off his head, the weight whereof was a talent of gold with a with the precious stones, and it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. We're talking about Joab. And he brought forth the people that that were therein. Now, check this out. He brought the people forth that were that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows of iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brick kiln. And thus did he in, unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. So David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. So basically made them slaves, right? But at that time, slavery is a mercy. You could go in and you could kill everybody or you could go in. The Romans learned this the hard way. Killing everybody, that don't help you, right? Now who's going to run? Who's going to run all the businesses? Who's going to run all the ironworks? Who's going to do all that stuff, right? It's better to just loot the city and keep everybody in place and but just tell them hey now you under the roman authority now right so that's how they did it back in those days right took over the city you didn't just kill everybody you left some people there to kind of run the city to be kind of slaves or agents of the the conquering people right all right gang we're gonna leave it right there we could go on but we're gonna leave it right there okay now my question is, can this help us? Can something like this help? Can this information help us? Anybody? Anybody want to respond to that? Oh, it's just us here. <laughs> 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 I was looking at I was looking at the page, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, but what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Absolutely, this can help us. You know, it, 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 to learn from someone else's mistake so that we try not to make the same mistake or even take the, you know, ego and the pride in it to know that even if you do make a mistake, there's always a way to repent and there's always a time to to uh, to come out of it, right? And 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 um, submit to the Father. So you know, um, it's very important that we we use His lens to 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 view all these things. And as Anae said earlier, you know, um, through our experiences, we we. You know, we, we look and, and use the Holy Spirit to kind of guide us through these things so that we, you know, we're empathetic and sympathetic to to those that are going through it or ourselves. You know, the, the main thing when the Lord says, get knowledge, get wisdom but with all that getting, get understanding. You can have knowledge, you can have wisdom. But if you have no understanding, it means nothing. What is understanding? The application of said knowledge and wisdom. So absolutely, the, everything in the book is is for our life. What do you think, Sister Annie? Yeah, I mean, it's there's so much in in both of these chapters, you know, and it's something that probably I can like identify with in each in each thing, right? Like, so it may not have been as extreme as David's, but it was extreme nonetheless. And you do you think um, like one, you see something that you want. In this case, you know, he saw this woman. So we have this, you know, like lustful spirit, but people lust not just over, um, you know, a female or male, like flesh. They lust over um, money or they lust over, yeah. you know, getting subscribers or they let, you know, it's so many things to like lust after. And then you got to figure out, OK, you want and you desire this thing. One, is it for you? Have you, you know, reached out to God? See, is this, is this for me? You know, this is what I desire. Is this for me? 
you know, I need you to affirm this for me, God. I want it, but I want you to affirm this for me. And then, like, you got to be okay with him saying, nope, it's not yours. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So we got to grow to realize point. that, you know what? Everything Good that point. we want may not be for us. And we Good may point. have to just be like, man, you know, David, you know, if he had just been a little more honorable, he could say, man, she's a beautiful woman. I'm so glad that one of my boys, my strongest soldiers, you know, that he has her as a wife. So we got to be able to step back and just like say, I'm glad you got it you know, head off, you know what I'm saying? You did a great job. I, I, I can respect you. And then when you think about um, like uh, the people that kind of were like enablers in some of this stuff, people that realized and saw it and, you know, some people not brave enough to say it, or maybe they try to sneak and say something. You sure that, you know, Uriah's wife, you talking about her, you know, so we get these little seeds of places where we can like deviate from what we what we were intending to do that weren't honorable, we got to learn how we got to pause in those times and actually stop, like stop ourselves. We need friends like Nathan. Um, and we got to recognize when we have those friends in our lives like Nathan that are willing to come to us and say, you know what? I got to let you know. I may not be able to come to you strong, like, hey, tighten up, buddy, because you might be like, you don't know nothing. You just, you know, you don't do nothing or you don't do anything. Um, but you got to be able to, and be willing to hear God speaking through somebody else to, to teach you something or to, you know, course correct you or whatever. So um, and then also just recognizing that, you know what, when you do something, even though you ask for forgiveness and you, you know, don't do it anymore, there may still be a consequence that is a stinging consequence of, of your actions. And you just got to kind of like say, you know what, he may show me grace. He may show me show me mercy in this. And he may just say, you know what, this is the consequence from doing what you're doing. So like that whole like this whole teaching today is just it's so full. So I'm praying that that we were all able to one, identify with some of these behaviors that we've exemplified in our life, um, but know that we must seek God and, um, you know, how we grow from it um, and the direction that we need to take. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I mean, it was so many different twists and turns in here. And um, I think the main thing, because me and Bolo had talked about it uh, before. And uh, thank you, Risa. Um, we had talked about it before, but we uh, uh, the main point that I was trying to pr bring out, I mean, there's a lot of points, good points. But the main point I was trying to bring out is that we can all make mistakes. There's nobody that's too high on the horse to fall off. The question is, what are we going to do? Shout out to Jill, by the way. Shout out to Jill. Uh, the, the main point is, is there a way out? Is there a way to step back into God's grace? Is there a way? Because we all make mistakes. But the thing about God, God is the, such an awesome God that it ain't just one strike you out. It's if you come back sincerely, you come back and be sincere about uh, like David said, you know, hey, I, I sinned, man. You know, I can't blame it on her. I can't blame it on uh, Uriah, and all, I can't blame it on nobody. I, I have sinned. He said, not we. He said, I have sinned. He didn't even put the woman in it. He took. He just was talking about his role in the situation. Mm -hmm. And now, now, like I said, this is the question of whether she was willing or not. That wasn't even relevant to this situation. He just said, hey, I did it. Mm -hmm. He just took the whole responsibility for himself, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a good thing that we, that is something I think we have to learn how to do, right? I was writing some notes about the Urban Warrior Academy and some of the tenets of what we want to uh, uh, prescribe to. And one of the things was, is that we always take responsibility for the choices that we make. We we have to take responsibility for them. Even if other people are involved and are willing participants, mm -hmm. we have to take responsibility for the choice that we make, especially when we are the catalyst for a situation, uh, a cavalcade of, of bad things that happen when we, you know, go the wrong way. We, we have to. And that'll make us better as people, right? But we got to know that we can go and get some forgiveness. We can get some, if we repent, sincerely repent, there's forgiveness waiting for us. It's ours. It's waiting for us. 
We just got to go and repent and get it. But the problem is, man, we follow the world's. Now, this is the main thing I, I don't like. And this is why I have to, we have to get to these young men early mm-hmm. is because they get so ingrained in this wicked world's value system mm-hmm. where you, they value uh, the notoriety of other people, fame, fortune, and all that stuff over I'm not saying it's bad to have those things, but when you value it over your own righteousness, that's where we're going to have a problem. And we see that what happened with David, right? He valued his uh, lower desires over his own righteousness. He got so caught up in that, he didn't even realize that he was doing wrong. The fact that he had a way to do it and to do everything and he could get it done that's all that mattered to him was that he could get it done. So we got to be, we got to be willing to. Now I feel like this. Why do most people, like we said, we talked about earlier about having that fear. You want to be exposed as being off the line of what God's been teaching. Right? So everybody tries to cover up with it. Not everybody, but some these people that do these evil things and they have positions where people look at them as, uh, you know, stable in believing in the Lord, and then they do something out of pocket, they don't want to be found out. They had a fear of the exposure, right? Because they vain, they got the vanity, right? They don't want to. They don't want people to know that they just a human being, and they have to, you know, they made a mistake. So what they do is they try to cover it up paying the people off or instead of just not doing it, <laughs> just don't do it. That's where the discipline comes in. We have to teach these young men discipline so that they will recognize that, Hey, there's some things. Yes. You have access to it. You could do it if you want to, right? You can do it, but is it the best thing for you? Is that the best thing for the person that you don't do it with? Right. Right empathy we got to have all of these different things so that's what we're trying to do y'all with the urban school i mean school urban the uh yeah the um the uh i forgot the name of my own co- uh, school what, what what is the cause of Teddy? it is the urban warrior academy urban warrior academy i was thinking of urban, <laughs> warrior academy. Uh, urban warrior academy that's what you know that's what we're trying to do here y'all is trying to put that together and y'all could donate to it if y'all want to. If not, no problem. I understand. But we try to make that happen for these young men. All right, y'all. So uh, let's get some closing remarks, y'all. Let's get up out of here. I think we did three and a half hours. I want to do two and a half. But hey, an extra hour. It was worth it. Mm-hmm. We was talking about the Lord, Vaughn. The Lord. <laughs> All right, y'all. Whoever wants to go first, let's get some closing remarks and then let's get up out of here. I can go so you and Bolo can tie Bo in it. Um, first and foremost, Urban Warrior Academy already is okay. The world just has to catch up, or we just got to like fall in line with what the world needs us to do to to show up because the heart of it is already there, the seed of it is there, the desire is already there, so it's already there. Um, this was really good, and I love when we're able to like talk about things and then go to God and say. I may not just in my natural eyes right now be able to see how you fit into this because you fit into everything. So sometimes we got to slow down in our day and say, let's look and see what the word says about this. Let's see how we should handle this. What I would say to people is to um, first and foremost, seek the word, seek God in all that you do. And he's there. And you have to just go to him in whatever it is that you've done and repent, like honestly, from your heart, repent, you know, just do the very best that you can in life to yourself and to other people and for other people. We have to recognize that, you know, you don't want to use, oh, I'm not perfect or I'm just human as some get out of free jail card. You're held to a higher standard. God needs you for greater than just your mediocre. He needs you to use him in all that you do. Seek him in all that you do. So I hope that this story, um, that you're able to see yourself and like give yourself a break 
that you've done it because to keep beating up on yourself, you can do like David, just keep digging a hole, digging more and more and more and more. You know, at some point, just stop. Like, oh man, this is not cute. There may likely be a consequence that I don't want to have to deal with, but you may have to. People may know, people may find out. They just ask God to give you strength and all that becomes, um, you know, revealed about what you've done because you're going to be greater and better after that. So um, thank you, Brother Clarence and Bolo, for just desiring to have this um, conversation today. Um, it just is feeling I didn't actually had not read scripture today. So this actually holds me accountable. Um, I was just talking to my my um, niece and nephew. I had them for the week. Um, one is four and one is six. And, you know, we talk about God, but I have to even do better and actually showing them the word too. You know what I'm saying? Like when we're talking about stuff, we talk about scripture, but actually letting them see it in the word, you know? So, but, so this is really good. I appreciate both of y'all. I love y'all <laughs> so much. And this actually really helped me today to do some self-reflection myself. Um, I, this, this was, this was really good today. So I thank y'all. Oh, uh, absolutely, sis. Any, any time, and you know, love you back. Any, any, any uh, uh, yeah, of course she know we love her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, but um, it, anytime you got something that you say, hey, you know what? Let's let's all talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the one good thing about our channel is we got, you know, any approach it from one direction, follow approach it from one direction, clans approach it from one direction, and we all just put our minds together and we work it out, man. We just share information, so. That's good, man. I, I I love that too about our channel. We can do we can do that, and uh, you know everybody's right, nobody's wrong. It's never a bad question, and so you know we can all ask. But uh, I thank you, Sister Any, mm -hmm. for coming. No, but up I here. just and I appreciate that you like my I I can y'all. I will not ever be embarrassed about anything. My lack of understanding, my um, you know need to study more, read more, um, maybe miss the mark on something because I'm, my goal is to always be pleasing to God. I want it to be where, however it is that he want the Holy spirit, that he allows the Holy spirit and other people to help me. It's for him. It's for him. I don't care. I, I don't care if it's on a panel. I don't care if it's with my niece and nephews. I've had my niece, younger nieces and nephews to help me get an epiphany about something in scripture that I that I didn't see. That I didn't even realize it. But the only way that you get all that glory, the only way that you get all that um, growth and, um, you know, just being better so you can serve God is that you have to read the word. Be around people who, like, honestly want you to grow, that love God, that have a heart for God, you know, so just pray for discernment and who it is that you fellowship with. Um, but sometimes, you know what, you may have to listen to sometimes people that you like, no, nah, no, that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, um, but just ask God in all of it and all of it, God, help me, help me line me up with how you want me then to interpret this, how you want me to receive this. Ask him to just be there in all of it. I use everything for his glory, all of it. So, but thank y'all again. <laughs> and y'all have a good week, okay? All right, you too, sis. We love you. All right, love all right. you. Bye-bye. I'm going to pull her down. Too, all right, and I want to thank Sister Annie for coming up here, you know, because sometimes we need a female voice to uh, ask questions, you know, and push back on us a little bit because sometimes we just look at it from the male perspective. Hold on, Bolo. Uh, Black Man of says, opposition is best teacher. My professor used to say, I've learned more from my opposition in, and than I have in a circle of people that were all agreeing with me. They just couldn't handle disagreement. Okay. <laughs> all right, Black Man Up Filter. We'll, 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 we'll take that. That's what you say. we take that, brother. Um, okay. Uh, just me and you, brother. What's the dilly, yo? I wanted to read something to you. Oh, please do. This is this kind of falls into um what you're saying. Um, and this is Leviticus chapter 10. It's only gonna be three verses, so okay, it won't be that long. Right. And you know, it, when you look at Moses, 
you know, he was a Levite. And Moses right. is Moses' brother, Aaron, is a Levite too, obviously. His children were the priests, the high priest. These are the guys, you know, that that did the, you know, they they brought the, the temple. They were uh, the ones that went into the temple. They were the ones that made the sacrifices and prayers and all these things. So they were brought into an understanding that others didn't have. They were brought into a discipline that others didn't have. That's what okay. this is. This is a discipline that you choose to put yourself under, right? A lot of people choose not to, right? Yes, so, when you read, so when you read Leviticus chapter 10, and the beauty of, of the father is the way he, put, he puts things into perspective. He gives you understanding. So it says, and Nadab and Abihu, these are two of Aaron's sons, okay. the sons of Aaron. Now, why are they the sons of Aaron? Because they came out of Aaron's loins. But there's a reason bigger than him, them being the sons of Aaron. They were the priests. These were the guys that, you know, that, that, that lit the incense, that, that uh, made the sacrifices. And these were the cats that delivered the word, right? Okay. Took either of them his censer and put fire therein. So now you have to understand Nadab and Behu, the sons of Aaron, the Levites, the high priests, who knew better, who grew up in this, mm -hmm. took on them his censer and put therein, uh, put and put fire therein, and mm -hmm. put incense therein, and offered strange fire before the Lord. Mm -hmm. So they knew what they were supposed to do and chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. These weren't cats that didn't understand. They understood, right? Mm -hmm. Which he commanded them not. So the Lord wasn't even consulted. Lord, can we light this incense? Nah, don't do that. They didn't mm. even consult them. They already knew what they were supposed to do. Mm. Now, this is the Lord. And there went out from the Lord, and there went out a fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Mm. Mm. So, you know, you have to understand, these cats knew better. Mm. It's not like they didn't know. This is why, you know, the severity of punishments move and fluctuate. It's not in, it's not static. It's always in flux, right? Mm. When someone knows and knows and knows, the punishment is different. So now here it is. Aaron's two boys die. Mm. And their uncle comes to their father. This is Moses' two sons. I mean, mm. Moses' two nephews. Okay. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that. The Lord spake, saying, I didn't say this, brother. This is the Lord telling me to tell you this, dog. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Those that call my name, I will be sanctified. Those mm -hmm. that know better are going to be held to a higher standard. Okay? Same mm -hmm. way how he did with David, right? Remember what he said? Now, I can't have it, the world talking nonsense about Israel because of you. Right. Got to hold you to a higher standard. Right. Right. So what does he say? I will be sanctified. I will be set apart. In them that come near me, you're going to treat me different. You ain't going to treat me like the other people you treat. So you can talk to Brother Clarence and Bolo like that, but you ain't going to talk to me like that. Mm. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Aaron had nothing to say. Mm. Now, you have to understand there's a reason why Moses said, this is the Lord. Mm. My two nephews, bro. Mm. I love these two kids. But yeah. you have to understand there's a bigger play at the, than, than us. This is what we don't get. What we don't understand or what we choose. Let me not say we don't get. We choose not to acknowledge that the father don't need us. He doesn't need gravity. He doesn't need air. He doesn't need photosynthesis. He doesn't need pollination. He doesn't need a firmament. We need all these things. Mm. So we need him. He doesn't need us. The Lord told Moses, I'll raise rocks to worship me. Mm. So it falls into line with what you're saying. Cats better stop playing with the father. Man. So I, but I it's like, why would you, you know what I'm saying, Bolo? Why would you like, that's like you walking to work every day, 10 miles, and you got a perfectly good car right there. 
but you won't get in the car and you won't drive the car because you're too lazy to put gas in it. I don't want to have to it's, open it's, the gas hatch and put it's, gas it's in it. Ego. It's ego, brother Clarence. It's pride. It's ego and pride. Right? It, it's you. It's well, basically, it's it's sin. And what is sin? Right? Yeah. Choosing to do everything but what the Lord tells you to do. Right. That that's what it is. You're making a conscious choice. I don't care what you think. At the end of the day, that's what made David different than all these other cats. David didn't make up an excuse. David said, yeah, you're right, I sinned. Yeah. He didn't sit there and go, yeah, I sinned, but you know what? But Sheba didn't have to. Yeah. I said, you, you know, Joab could have told me no. Yeah. Ah, he didn't do that. He said, yeah, yeah, it's because of me, bro. It's because of me. You're right. I got it. I don't like the punishment, yeah. but I got it. And that's what made cats, that's what made them different. There was no finger finger crossed, yeah, I'm going to take the punishment, but I know I didn't do such and such. Well, what you going to do? What, 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 what you going to do, Bolo? The Lord is wrong? That's what, the point. What, 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 <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> that's the point. Who's wrong in this situation? Me or the Lord? You see, that's the point. That's, you know, you have to have enough enough understanding to know that he has the bigger picture. He knows the bigger right. picture. Hell, he created it. Right. You don't know nothing. I know nothing. So I have to have enough faith. It's even when you read the story of Joseph, oh, what did he say? Point. Faith. He, said to, he point. said to his brothers, he said to his brothers that what you did to me was meant for evil. But the Lord, it was a glorious, bigger picture. That I went through what I went through so that I can save my people. You guys don't even understand yeah. what I do. And that's the, the journey that all of us are on. Right? Jeremiah yes, 21 right. 11. I know what I created. I know you. Before I put you in the womb, I knew you. So we have to trust the process. A lot of the times we end up with, you know, as men, we end up with women that the Lord didn't want us to be with. Oh my God. We do. Huge now, problem. I, we, we we continue to choose that woman. So the Lord, the Lord says, okay, go ahead. My son used to always want to touch the radiator. <laughs> always. And there was nothing I can tell him because he's young. He doesn't understand yeah. hot right. fire. He doesn't understand. I let right. him touch it. I let him touch it. Burned him. Guess what? There's nothing that I could do to put him next to that radiator. Man. He's never going to touch it because experience teaches you. So, you know, a lot of the times we are so hard-headed that... You, you, the Lord says to you, you know what? You didn't want me to tell you? Cool. You want to experience it? That's even better. Go ahead. Either way, you're going to learn. But you want the scars from it? Do your thing. Do your and thing. You're going to learn. You're going <laughs> to learn today. And sometimes, and sometimes that learning can be death. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's, yes. that's the fear. You know, when you said that the fear that we have in the Lord is disappointment, it's not the fear that he's going to kill us. It's the fear of disappointing our father. Yeah. That's the fear that we have because I don't want to disappoint him. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the thing. Sometimes it takes death for you to learn. It's unfortunately yeah. that you're dead at that point. Yeah. But you're going to learn. Yeah, you're gonna, you ain't going to do that no more. Won't do it no more. <laughs> you won't do it no more. Remember the rich man that used to walk over the the, the, the poor man and he died. Uh -huh. he, and and that scripture shows you that when you die, you go someplace. You know, if Hitler didn't repent before he died, if you end up next to that dude, guess what? That's not a good thing. Yes. Because he does remember he was in a hot place. Remember, he said, Yo, Abraham, just dip your finger in the water and put it on my tongue. He said, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. So you, we better understand that we're so worried about the 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 five thing, the, 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 the five inch life that we have here on this earth, and, and, and seldomly are we worried about the eternity of life after this. You know what? I, and and, and it's, you know, man, it's just like our people have been turned away from the love of the God, and we just 
it's like, how do we get them back? How do we, you know, it, it's a hard thing. I mean, I know it's not, it's nothing, it's outside of our control. We just have to present the information. That's it. But it's just hard to see them suffering absolutely, and know that they don't have to suffer. And they just, you know, let me give you an example what I'm talking about, Bolo. Clarity and suffering. Let me, let me give you an example what I'm talking about. Okay. So I'm on my way to work in the morning and I stop at the AM PM to get a little something to drink, right? And there's a brother out there, you know, got his hat on backwards. He's, uh, you know, asking everybody for money, right? Right. He say, hey, can you give me $2? And he wasn't the one of the ones that say, okay, well, you ain't got the money. Okay, have a nice day. He wasn't one of those. <laughs> he, was, he was one of these, like, you ain't got $2. You know what I mean? Word up. I, you know, and it's funny, man, because when it, it's, it's a trip because th those people, man, they always look at you like it's a problem, right? Like, like you, you ain't got $2 for me. Polo, you need to get your life together because you should have $2. You should at least have $2 Absolutely. for me. You right. gotta have two dollars for me, G. Who, right. Come on, man. They 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 look at you like, man. You need to get your life together. You really need to get your life together. And you're like, no, you need to get your life together. You're the one out here, right? <laughs> so anyway, so he he was out there, right? So when I came out at AMP uh, 7-Eleven, um, he asked me for two dollars. So I said, no, I don't have two. And I went to the car and I got three. Nice. I, I, you know, I came with. I said, hey. I got three dollars. He said, "Cool," and he snatched it right, and I held on to it. Right, I said, "Hold on, G. There's a catch." He said, I, "He." I said, "You got to give me a few minutes to tell you about the Lord." Mm. Now, now Bolo, I'm gonna tell you. Now, sometimes you get like I, I happened. This happened about a week ago before, and the dude was like, "Yeah, I'm okay, cool." This dude was like, "Um." Uh, he was trying to think of some reason why he had to go, right? <laughs> but then he, he's like, he like, he, can, he couldn't go nowhere, man. The Lord just planted his feet, man. He couldn't go nowhere. So, so I said, okay. I said, hey, bro. I said, how'd you even get to this point where you out here asking people for money? Because you know you don't have to do that, right? He said, man, I was, you know, I was in a gang and my house was, you know, my father was gone and this and that, right? I said, okay, I understand that, man. I said, but I'm just here to tell you, brother, whether you listening or not, I could tell you what he didn't want to hear. It, but I'm just telling him, hey, you know, brother, the Lord can help you, man. And you got to do an ask. And you can learn how to. I said, you learn how to ask. I know I'm probably not the person, but you can go to any place where you think the Lord is being remembered. Go in there and just ask, inquire about reaching out to the Lord. Right. The Lord, can, I'm telling you, so I'm giving my testimony. Hey, man, I was dead. I was in the grave, man. One foot in the grave, the other foot on its way. Right. And here I am out here moving around talking. I never thought I would be like this again. And so he's like, oh, OK, OK, OK. And as soon as I said, OK, well, that's it, man. You know, I just want you to put that on your mind. I know you got you. You got to go get you some money to make. But I just want to put that on your mind. He's like, yeah. Boom. Then when I tell you it was that conversation was out of his brain before he even got back in front of the door. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but, but my point is, brother, I did what I was supposed to do. That's it. I you did what, what I was supposed to do. He, he, uh, let me hit you with one. Okay. I just I just got lunch. I'm at work. Right. Just got lunch. Some Spanish food. Spanish this Spanish food. food was so good, brother. I, I'm about to take it home. <laughs> this is how good it was, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it home and polish it off. So this dude comes to comes to uh, my vehicle and he says, yo, you know, I just got out of jail. I got no money. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just want to get something to eat. Just want to get something to eat, man. A couple of bucks. That's all. You know, you know, the devil jumped on me. He was like, man, I'm not giving him no, no <laughs> Hell you no. Know, this is something for you to eat at home. You know, this cost you $15. You know, I'm man. He's chicken. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I said, bro, here, man, take this. Gave it to him. He said, thank you, man. Thank you. Took the food. He walked not four cars away from me. Threw it on the floor. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> threw it on the floor. I was so pissed. 
because, <laughs> because all I can do is taste that food. I was so pissed. And, you know, it, it came to me, the Lord says, you know, when you give, give, you know, with, with an open heart. And I had to just come and say, good God, man, these, these dudes, bro. You know, they, they, at the end of the day, my thing is, you know, um, I don't, I don't give them money. It de- well, it depends. Let me say, it depends on the person. The spirit tell me yeah. to give it to him. I give it to him. But most Same here, bro. Most Same of them are bottom food. Like, what you want? You want something to eat? Yeah, go get something to eat, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll pay for it. Um, and I'll tell you know the store clerk or whoever, do not give him the money. If anything, hold it. I'll come in. You give me a credit or something. Don't right. give him the money. You know. However, you know we got to learn. That's the love that we have. But it doesn't change the fact that we are who we're supposed to be and we are children of God. And I say that to say that Moses, what Moses did was frustrated. He was frustrated. Must I smite the stone and give you water? He was frustrated that everything that was done, all the sacrificing that he did, all the beef and all this stuff that he did to get Israel to where it is through the strength of the Lord. It was frustrating. And what did the Lord say? You. This ain't about you. It's about me. Yeah. And that's the point of why I say that this ain't about man. It's never been about man. It's always been about the father. But man has delivered this book to each other in an egotistical way. It's always been uh-huh. about him. So the Lord uh-huh. can care less about your feelings. You don't think uh-huh. he knew Adam had feelings? You don't think he knew Moses had feelings? You see what happened with Aaron's sons. He said, no, hold on, dogs. These two knew better. It's not like they didn't know. If they didn't know, then the punishment probably wouldn't have been as harsh. But they knew they were the sons of you. Yeah. So they knew better. They chose to disrespect me. Mm. The difference between when Christ went to talk to, to, to Pilate. When the Pharisees and Sadducees was asking him questions, he didn't answer. Why didn't he answer them? But he spoke with Pontius Pilate because... He already knew in the hearts of the Pharisees and Sadducees, their hearts was already made up. Right. Why talk to someone that I can't? And and that goes into even with us. Why talk to someone whose heart's already made up? Yeah. I can understand if we don't know. But once the Lord gives you that epiphany, this dude here is seared. Right. Why do you cast your pearls into swine? Yeah. You know, and again, we love our people. Yeah. You know? We don't want to see them like this. But at the end of the day, I can't save nobody, my G. Right. <laughs> my, right. Job is, my job is just to mark cats and keep yeah. marching. That's our job, to cry yeah. aloud, to blow the horn. The Lord is the one that increases. All we do is plant and water. That's all we yeah. do. So it's hard to, 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 to stay in that vibration. Yeah. You're seeing you know, your people going through what they're going through. But, you know, I hate using the word, but if you would turn, to, you know, turn to God, you wouldn't have these issues. At least you would have clarity. And you would have somebody to help you through it, even if there Absolutely. is an issue. Somebody Absolutely. to help you through it. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, it, it just, it is what it is, man. And this is why the Lord says, forsake ye not the assembly of one another, man. You know, you look around the world, look around the world at what's going on. You know, look around the world. If you don't see that things is getting tighter, I don't know what to tell you. Mm. You don't see that things is getting closer. I don't know what to tell you. Don't. Mm. So that's my last word, brother. (laughs) All right, brother. When's the next time we can see you, man? Tomorrow morning uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, yeah. In the we had some problems with, with YouTube, uh, so that's okay. why we didn't have nothing Friday, Saturday, okay. or even today. But um, everything should be cleared up, Lord willing. So, yeah, tomorrow morning, Lord willing. All right, big brother. All right, I yeah, will catch you. We'll catch you later, man. All we right, got to do this again, right? I, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. y'all heard him. Y'all heard him, right? All six I'm here. Y'all heard him. Yeah. He said, he, he said he's going to come back and break some more stuff down for us. I'm waiting right? for you. I'm waiting for the battle, too. We might well, we might as well get uh, Anthony over here too. Oh, break absolutely, we gotta have Big Ant here. And, and okay. I'm, I'm wait, don't, don't, don't not hear what I just said though. I'm what, waiting. What, for what, what? 
I'm waiting for the second battle. What? Uh, yeah, okay. It, the what, the what, mic ain't what, working what? now, right? The mic ain't working? Okay. What is what is this thou this that thou is talking about, <laughs> Brother Bolo? What is this thou, what battle what you talking about? I speaketh of the first battle that we had it. <laughs> of the first primary battle that we have it. Word. There's Word. so many things goeth your wayeth. Yes, yes. Well, sir. let me tell you, you, it will not it beeth that wayeth <laughs> the second <laughs> time around it, brother. Because we are going to throw us <laughs> some algebraic <laughs> in, 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 in there, my brother. Word. Word. <laughs> Word. We're going to throw algebra. We're going to throw quantum physics in there. We're going to throw all that in there. Yeah, word. This dude, this dude going to turn out to have a degree in quantum physics, a degree in algebra, degree in mathematics. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> we'll get that moving, man. You know, as you know, we got, we, we got a lot of stuff on the table right now. Absolutely. But as soon as we get Absolutely. that stuff, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, on its yeah. way and moving, don't yeah. worry, brother. We, we, are, will, we, we are. will we will sit down and we will have it and then you know the real okay. winner right will be the real, <laughs> the real so, winner. okay so since the real winner will be presented that right. time so right. okay cool so right now the interim winner the interim. You, got, you got his belt and you polishing it right the interim winner yeah, you you know we 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 I, what we doing is we just keeping record. We keeping track of everything right now. So I don't need to polish it. anything. Why not? We, we all, because we don't we we you know when you include generosity in the oh, proceedings, then that's that's you. not we 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 got to have a real battle that then that denotes the real winner. Ooh. Like you like you know how somebody could be the winner in name. Right. right, 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 right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I so I just it, it was presented. They needed a. They needed a winner, so they just gave the belt right. to that person. Yeah, wow. now you know, man. Now you know. They just needed a name to put on the trophy, right? Because it wasn't no real. It, it, you know, it was so many things, so many things in the back, in the back of the stage there. But see, now when we go out, now we gonna have a. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the real thing, man. Okay. Oh I'm trying God. to warn you. Now, what I can do for you? Tell me. Don't don't be like David. You can go oh. ahead and back out of the situation right now. <laughs> okay. I will listen. I'm gonna think about it as I walk on my roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come down off the roof, brother. Come down off the, off the roof. You don't. You don't have to. You. I don't you want to be on that roof right Too here. Much Too much stuff go down on that roof. I'm gonna walk see. around the property and I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to tell you, let's go all the way. You can say, you can say, Brother Clarence. Yeah, I messed up, man. I, <laughs> I, I thought I actually won that last battle. I actually thought I won that, even though everybody said I won it. Right. I, I actually thought I actually won that, but I I know, come to find out, there was some chicanery in gotcha. both camps. It was it was some chicanery going on. So okay. so okay. now, now I know this is going to be a real one. Right. But. Maybe I don't want this heat. Maybe, maybe I should get out of it right now. <laughs> what do you what do you think, Brother Clarence? Well, Bolo, if you want to if you want to just get out of it, man, you can go ahead. <laughs> you can just go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Lord may be a conqueror in all things. And it, it shall be a battle of battles. For those a of y'all war wars. For those of y'all, because I know there's some of y'all. Y'all can't sleep at night. Like, who, who's the most talented? Brother Clarence or Brother Bolo? Who, 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 who? What is it? Who's what? I need that answer, right? I need Don't worry. Know. Just sit tight. Sit tight. We Both of us got a lot on the plate right now. On our plates right now. We, we're going to get <laughs> the Carissa. Uh, we get, we, we, we're going to, we're going to get that answer. Hopefully we can by the summertime. We get up, we put all us. he can put all the stuff he's working on, and I put all the stuff I'm working on to bed by the summertime, and we it's can get, we, it, it'd be on and popping, right? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at Anthony say pistols at dawn. <laughs> 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 I don't Word. see, you know what, CTBS, I don't know if he, see, I'm trying to give him a way out. 
I'm trying to not get it. See, David got himself locked in. See, I'm, I'm right. trying to give him a way not to get himself locked in. That pride keep, is a hell of a thing, brother. That pride but, is a hell of a thing. But he keep doing, he keep taking the Uriah route. No, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm right. here, man. I'm good, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm we good. We don't stay on this No, we ain't going. I'm not. Nah, I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And nope. I'm sitting here like, I'm, I, now I'm in the position of Dave. Like, you sure you don't, you know, you don't want to come off the roof. You don't want to, you know, come on, baby. You I know, already know the outcome, on. baby. I know the outcome already. <laughs> you sure you don't want to end this, Bolo? I already know the outcome. <laughs> Hey man, Scorch said he's the Scorch said he'd get both of us, man. Scorch said he put oh, both Scott, of us down. Come on, man. Scorch Earth. <laughs> you, you walking into fire right now. You, you, don't want, you don't want us to turn the heat on you, baby. Oh man, no, that. come on, man. You know, Wait we, we, for one of us to fall, and then you jump in and try to grab the spoils. Don't don't get yeah, into it with both yeah. of us standing up. Yeah, it's, it's better, it's better for you to just uh Walk away, scores. You don't want us to tag team, you know. We tag team. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, tag yeah, team yeah. somebody. It's gonna, that's gonna really be bad. Yeah, it's yeah, better sure. for us to be, beat each other up. That, right, that's right. the better Let situation. Let us do that. Do the Kobe <laughs> command. Let us fight, and then <laughs> you yeah. throw hurt one of our eyes, and then take us both out. Don't, don't, don't Ooh. come in with both of us are feeling good. All right, man. But so brother, thank you for having me, man. Thank you for being I, with I, me. I, I love you, brother. I love you. Love I appreciate you. you so much, man. Uh, you know, this brother's done so many things in front of the scenes, behind the scenes. Y'all just don't know, man. This is a good brother, man. And uh, you know, I ain't saying he perfect. I ain't saying I'm perfect, but as far as good, hearted, good, moving brother. This is a good brother, man. If you ever get a chance to listen to this brother, man, know that his heart is in the right place. It, 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 no matter what you hear him say, he, his heart is in the right place. You may not <laughs> understand it, but if you think, go back and think about it for a while, you'll be like, you know what? That made a little sense there. And the more and more you think about it, you say, oh, okay. You know what I mean? But uh, go check the brother out at Bolo TV, The Village. Go check them out. Good vibe, good people. Man, they're always trying to answer questions. They don't ask scorched earth. They don't put nobody down. They, they give you a chance to ask your question, even if it's a pushback on what they're saying. Ask T-Biz, the same thing, man. They will, they will always be open to you answering, asking questions. Now, they get more into the word than we do. We use the word a little bit, but I, that's why I like to bring them don't over. Do that. Don't do that. You use the word but, a whole lot. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you so, guys are much more uh break it down a lot further you know what i mean so i want people to go over there and check you guys out as well you know what i mean if they really want more in-depth breakdown of the word you you know you you guys do it more in depth too i try to make it more entertaining so that the people will listen that's good. that's good because a lot of times people think we're boring you know, hey, Ray, you know, that's I think you know what I'm saying. Unless they have like like <laughs> how you guys break it down in more of a family atmosphere, unless it's like right. that, sometimes they get intimidated by yeah. by the word, right? So we either have to break it down a certain way. But hey, you guys go on over there, check out Bolo TV in the village. If you haven't already subscribed to Bolo TV in the village, get on over there and subscribe to Bolo TV in the village and just go check out Brother has a Monday, he has a uh, the morning prayer services. I mean, you know, they just walk, they just read the word and then you know send you to work, man. Come on. Well, you can't beat that with a baseball bat in today's world. Care. Ain't nobody else giving you information like that, man, to I'll help you I'm calling you in the morning. I'm going to call you 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't, I can't hear you. I, I, what? Call something, call what? Listen, what? Listen. Something, something's At going morning. on. <laughs> <laughs> I love so you, brother. And your show, man. Thank you so much for having thank me. You. Big thank Ed, you. I got to call you. I got to talk to you. But thank you for having me, man. I love you, brother. I love uh, Mene, Scorched Earth, Bogota. Everyone that was up here, you know, Chat Risa, everyone that's here, man, thank you guys. Yeah. You know, it's hard to find platforms like this anymore, man, where we can yes, have conversations about truth, you yes, know. Sir. So please subscribe and, and support. So with that being said, thank you, brother. I love you. Thank you, brother. Love you. Peace, man. All right, man. That is a good brother, man. That is a good. Pre matter of fact, TBS, all the rest of them. If you go over there, Scorched Earth, all of them, they're good people, man. So you you really want to get into breaking down the word, going over to Bolo TV in the village, man. It's a whole, it's, I mean, it ain't, and Bolo was right, man. It ain't too many places, us as grown people trying to be responsible, we trying to be responsible people can go to be encouraged to be better people, right? Most of the content that's out here is either trying to, put one person down or put another person down or put this person down or, 
are not in, in, in not encouraging us to be better people. That is the critical issue, man. If you're going to be a responsible, man, you're going to have to try to find places where people will encourage you to be responsible. That means we're going to hold you accountable if you do something and you come to us and you ask us for our advice. This ain't the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We ain't going to just tell you something. We know it's your whole life. You calling in about your, this is your life. So if you go over to Bolo in the Village, man, I'm telling you, see, they're not going to just say, ah, oh, yeah, go do that. You know, just leave your wife. Just leave your husband. They're not going to, you know, they're going to try to talk you into getting some real help to help your situation, man. Just like we will here too. You know what I'm saying? But they're more, they're, they're much more, don't listen to Polo. They're much more scripturally based than what we, we do a little bit. Compared to them, we do a little bit. But they're much more scripturally based in approaching things. And, and, and it's a good vibe, man. It's not nothing where they don't judge you. They ain't going to say, oh, man, you, you, you used to do this. Oh, you used to do that. They don't judge you. They're just going to say, hey, look, man, this is the word. This is what it say. Oh, well, Bolo, I don't, I, it don't, I, I, I know Bolo good enough to, he's going to say, well, it's not me. This is what this say. <laughs> and you can find the loophole in this. That's on you, but I'm just telling you what it say. Same thing with Anthony. Same thing with Lyric. Same thing with Scorsese. I mean, they just going to tell you, hey, this is what it say. Right? Go over there, check Bolo TV in the village out, man. You know, it's good people, good, good channel, man. And they just trying to help people. Be better people, man. It ain't about judging nobody. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. Ain't no uh, fire and brimstone. It's just, hey, man, Bolo, I got a problem. Uh, T-Biz, I got a problem. Can you help me? Well, we'll try. We'll try to give you some words of inspiration. That's all we can do, y'all. That's all we can do is encourage our people. Our people are under the spell of the devil. They're walking around. They're under the spell of the devil, and they've been They've been uh, 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 suckling off the devil's teeth since they was a baby. Since they was a baby. So now they can't even recognize right guidance because they've been so sucking on the devil's teeth for so long. They are, The only kind of milk they can drink is the devil's milk. When God brings their milk in a clean glass, they don't even want that milk. Come on now. Oh, of course, you're right, Scorch. Don't forget about Von Bryant. Well, we we already know Von Bryant is a tiger <laughs> when it comes to that Bible. He's a tiger. But you're right. Can't forget about Von Bryant. There's so many people over there. M. Mills. So many people over there. Uh, Lady Navarre. So many people over there that, you know, that try to encourage people to do better. So many. So many. Can't get into them all, but so many. That's why go on over there and check them out. But yeah, our people, our people are so used to the devil's milk, man. When you present God's milk to them, they're gonna reject it at first. That's normal. You can't take that personally, right? God, Moses had a problem, right? He took a lot of stuff personal, but you can't take that stuff personally, man. They've been they've been with the Pharaoh for so long, man. All they knew is they rations. Right? They get out there where they ain't got that. Now they got to hunt for their own food. Now they got to raise their own food. They like, what? what, what, what? <laughs> we was doing better when we was back there, man. We got our rations. We, But there ain't no rations with freedom. There ain't no rations. Why? Because you ain't got no master to give you no rations. You free, you free. If you a slave, you a slave. And as a slave, you can't be more, you can't have a moral compass. You can't be morality. You can't have morality when you're a slave. Because morality is going to get in the way of your survival. Master tell you do something. or tell you to, hey, bring your little daughter, bring your four-year-old daughter up to the house. I've been looking at her. She's been looking kind of good. Bring her up to the house. You can't have a moral compass. Say, no, that's wrong. I'm not going to bring my, I'm not going to bring my four-year-old daughter into the house so that you could do something to her sexually? You're a grown man. You're going to ruin my daughter. Her head is going to, I mean, the least of which is her body. Her mental state is going to be off when she know a grown man went up in her at four or five years old. 
So you can't resist that as a slave. As a free person, you can say, uh-uh, we free. And you can protect yourself or attempt to protect yourself. You got to, what you got a right to do as a slave. You have no rights. So why would we want to stay a slave? But we don't, our people are slaves to the mentality of the wickedness that they around. Jesus said, be in the world, not of the world, right? So we hear, how do we be here and not be of this wicked world? How? By having these books, having God's word close at hand, having it close in hand. The, uh, <clears throat> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called our brain original paper. You got to put that, you got to put that Bible and Quran and everything else of good on original paper. This is your original paper is the brain, right? Now you got a smartphone, you know, you don't even need uh, notebooks anymore, right? You got a smartphone, you can put it in your notes, right? But we got to do better than that family. We got to put it on the original paper, right? Because one day there ain't going to be no smartphones. One day there ain't going to be no books. All the books going to get taken away, right? That's coming. That's coming. The Bible, Quran, Torah, all these books that give us enlightenment of God, they're going to be taken away. Like Ms. Fark, I said, a test is coming. The t that's going to be the test. When you take a test, what happened? The teacher tell you, put your books away. Put your books away. We're going to do an examination. Put your books away. Well, that's coming, family. This wicked world is going to say, put your books away. There's no need for it. There is no God. They're basically saying it now. But it's going to come to just like that twilight zone. There is no God. There is no God. You don't need no Bible no more. Don't even call on God. Just the state, the state, the state, right? Or they give you a champion. Here's Donald Trump. Here's Joe Biden. Pick your champion. Those Them guys ain't champions. <laughs> <clears throat> but you got to pick between Beelzebub and the devil, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's family, family. We got to teach our children. We got to teach our children to press on God for help. We can't, we, we can't not do it no more. And I don't mean that we, 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 you know, make it an unpleasant thing. I mean, we got to make it a pleasant thing for them to realize they can reach out to the Lord of the universe, man. We got to make it a pleasant thing. It's a class. Why? Uh, that's why you. I try to make things fun, and you know, so that when we, even when we read the Bible, we can we, we can have fun, or we read the Quran, we can have fun. You know what I'm saying? It's not because it's it's really not. See, we've been taught that following God is difficult, but not following God is the difficult part. They just make it seem not difficult, but it's the more difficult part of not listening to God's wisdom and following His wisdom. Look at this story we just read about David and Bathsheba. First, the man, first he saw this man's wife and he said, oh, she looked good. Okay, that may happen, right? We may be out on the street and we see somebody's wife and we say, man, that, that sister looked good. But that should be the extent of it. But because Davidson had a discipline to discipline himself to say, this is wrong. Me going any further than this right here is wrong. That's somebody's wife. Especially when he finds out that the person is somebody's wife already. Maybe he said to himself, you know, if that's just a single, I can maybe make her one of my wives, right? But once he finds out that's one of his uh his one of his soldiers' wives, case closed. Case closed. But instead of respecting that it was one of his soldiers' wife, he brought the woman to him and he slept with her. And not only did he sleep with her, he made her, he impregnated her. How many of us have made that mistake? How many of our young men are out there making that mistake? Right? Because they listen to cats like Fresh and Fit selling them, you got to get a high, you got to, you got to sleep with a whole bunch of women to talk to me. Or you got to sleep with a whole bunch of women for me to consider you a man. 
I gave you guys an example from the beginning, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what good is it that you're going to sleep with all these different women? Really? I mean, be, be, being honest, what is good? What is the good part? Are we going to go into the bank? Me and Vaughn go into the bank. Vaughn goes in and says, I slept with 50 women, and Clarence comes in and says, I slept with five. Are they going to take Vaughn straight to the vault and say, oh, Vaughn, you slept with 51? Oh, let's go to the vault, Vaughn. Here's a hefty bag. Just put what you want in a hefty bag, <laughs> right? Vaughn be like, don't you want me to write it down how much money I took? No, Vaughn. Take as much as you want. Didn't you say you slept with 50 women? Oh, we're gonna just take as, take, take as much money as you want. Is that going to happen? <laughs> or I go, we go to the loan officer. Vaughn says, hey, I slept with 50 women. And Clarence says, oh, I slept with five. Is the loan officer going to say, Clarence, go back out in the lobby and wait. Vaughn, come on over here and sit down, man. Let's talk about getting you this million-dollar loan. <laughs> that don't even make no sense, right? Or you're gonna go into uh you go into the supermarket, right? Me and Vaughn both got full baskets of food, and Vaughn says, Hey, I slept with 50 women. I say, I slept with five. Cashier gonna say, Oh man, Mr. Bryant, please take it, take your food and go. <laughs> What really do you get? This, this, my point is, what are you actually going to get by sleeping with all these different women besides uh, pro, uh, getting your coat, getting yourself uh, in a position where you could get uh, diseases or uh, getting yourself in a position where you could impregnate somebody you don't even know. You could impregnate somebody you don't even know, and now you got to co-parent with somebody you don't even know. You don't agree, nothing, you guys don't have nothing in common. How can you co-parent with a person and, and get a good result when there's always conflicting, conflicting, uh, 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 conf conflict in the way of discipline? It's no, you, you can you're not going to get a good result. Discipline for children in a wicked world today, in this wicked world, the discipline has to be very uh, on point. You can't have lots of gaps in the discipline. If you do, these children are always going to take the easy way, easy road. We got to be on point, man. You have a child with somebody. Now, how are you going to do that, man? How can you make that happen? You don't even know this woman. <laughs> Vaughn said, why you throwing me in the butt? Vaughn, because you're the, you're our, you're, let's talk to Better Black Life, uh, person that we throw under the bus. You just that person. Huh? <laughs> Vaughn said, I'm a change man. I'm a change man. <laughs> what did what, what, what back 10 say? Your honor, I'm a change man. Right? <laughs> Shout out to Vaughn Bryan, man. Vaughn is a good sport. But I'm just saying, Vaughn, I mean, really, what are you going to get by sleeping with all these different women? Nothing. You get no awards. You can't go into the supermarket and say, I slept with 50 women. Oh, bro, see, go right, come right in, go, bro, see. Get all the food you want and just walk out. Is that going to happen? You can't go into the bank. Hey, I slept with 50 women. Oh, bro, see, just go straight over to the vault, right? Just go straight over. You can, can you go to the airline, right? You go to American Airlines, hey, I slept with 50 women. Oh, where you want to go? Bro, see where you want to go. You can fly first class. Anywhere you want to go. No, you don't get nothing. You don't get nothing. Therefore, if you're not going, if it has no translatable value then of sleeping with all these different women, then obviously it's a false it's a false thing. It has no translatable value. It has nothing that you can even get internally that's good. It's all ego. It's all vanity. Where has vanity helped any of us for the sake of vanity? Where has vanity helped us? Vanity typically doesn't help us. When we are when we driven by our egos, 
that typically don't help us. When we're driven by righteousness, that's usually when you get the good result. It may not be the result you want, but it's the best result. If David would have just came to the Lord and this situation would have got exposed and the Lord would have showed the people that he had a problem with David, but yet he's still his beloved and he's going to get this punishment. He's going to get this work, but because he repented uh, sincerely, as Bolo said, I'm still going to, you know, this still my man. He messed up and I'm a, you know, I'm gonna get with his program, but don't get it twisted. He's sincere about his repentance. I got him. What is that telling us y'all? We need to be sincere with our repentance. We can't be out here repenting. Like, yeah, God did it again. Oh, I messed up again. God poop. I did it again. Oh God, I messed up. Poop. I did it again. I get it. That's not being sincere. Right? You got to be sincere with your repentance, right? And then some of y'all be like, oh, well, if God is going to forgive, all I have to do is live the craziest life I want to, and then at the end, all I got to do is say, I repent. Maybe so. Maybe so. But that's God's decision. I would think it would be better for you to reflect his mercy and kindness in your life, right? Because you don't know what's going to happen when you do something like that. You don't know. We know what's going to happen if you be sincere. We already know what's going to happen. But if you're not sincere, what's going to happen? If you wait until the last breath you got and say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Who knows? Maybe God will forget. I don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I don't. I'm going with the odds. The odds are, I know for sure if you accept God in your life, you know, at a decent time in your life, while you, while you may have the choices to do what you want, but you're willing to do what God instructs you to do, I know that's going to work out better in my opinion. But I can't worry about what's going to happen to you if you do. I, I can't. I'm, I'm worrying about what's going to happen to me and what's going to happen to my family. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do. As for me and my family, as, a, as this book says, as for me and my family, we going this way. We going this way. You can wait if you want to. You could tear everything up and then when, when you're on your last leg, do that. But I don't know what's going to happen. I can't promise you. Because I, I don't know. That's a decision that's way above my pay grade. Right? My pay grade is way down here. So I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen. I know for sure what's going to happen if you do the right thing in enough time. But who knows what's going to happen? Do you want Do you want to make that? You want to risk that? Okay. That's up to you, right? Vaughn said, repentance is a good thing, but you still reap what you sow. Yes, see, Vaughn, that's why people don't want to go to the Lord because you're still going to be held accountable, right? And they don't want to be held accountable. You want to do something and not have nobody tell you that you did wrong, right? It's like David. David was like, man, you tripping. Why would, what? Somebody actually did that? He said, David like, man, let's go get him. Nathan like, hold on, homeboy. <laughs> you don't need to saddle up. You the man I'm talking about. Huh? What? <laughs> you the man I'm talking about, David. David like, oh, yeah, you right. He forgot about it already. You, you right. Like, he felt like, man, I, 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 I you know, it's, it's gone because the man's dead. Right? So my sin is covered because he's dead. Now, because I married her, I, I, I married her in a lawful way because her husband is passed. Did that still cover up the sin of him killing the man? 
right? That didn't cover up that sin, right? <laughs> he thought his sin was covered because the man got killed. He took his wife. We got to, we got to, and I'm talking about we, I'm talking about men and women. Thank you, Sister Annie. For, I'm talking about men and women. We, we, we have to uh, look at these lessons. Now that we're more older and more mature, we have to look at these lessons so we can break them down to the young ones. The problem is the young people are so turned off with religion because they're hearing about all these scandals, right? David had a scandal on his hands. He didn't want the scandal to get out, right? So he's willing to kill this man. So the scandal wouldn't come out that he had slept with his wife while he was alive. What you out here doing and what am I out here doing? What are we out here doing that we trying to hide? Right? Shout out to Jeff Short, by the way. Jeff said, I call it thief on the cross mentality. That's to I'm going to live my life any way I want and then I'll repent, change my life later. That's a dangerous gamble. That's a dangerous gamble, Jeff. Plus, why do that? Why put yourself through all that trouble, all that stress? Why not just follow the, the Lord, stay from where you ain't supposed to go, and not do and not have all that stress? See? But our people are so used to stress because we've been in stress since we've been on these on this uh in America, man. We we so used to stress. We eat stress for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But now God is here. God has said to us, we, you don't have to live like that. You're going to have to have some discipline. And if you do wrong, there might there's going to be some consequences. But my, the Lord's consequences is always going to be better than the world's consequences. Right? Family, I hope you got something out of what we were talking about today. All we try, all I was trying to do was explain how that anybody could go left. Anybody, the most beloved of the Lord, anybody could go left, man. So what does that mean for us? You're judging these pastors and you're judging these uh, imams and you're judging these uh, rabbis. And you're judging, judging, judging them. And we really don't know the level of temptation that's approaching them. You just don't know. Some of these cats, they mean well, but they got hidden desires. Some of these dudes got hidden desires, and they're able to control them for four years, for 10 years, for 15, 20. They got hidden desire. But one, once their, uh, their uh, discipline is low, and their desire is high and the opportunity is there, that's when you're going to see what they're really about. That's when you're going to see what they're really about. And sometimes these preachers crack. Sometimes these fathers crack. Sometimes brothers crack. Sometimes some of these people crack under the weight of their desire. Their desire become why? Because this world tells you that your desire is what you should be chasing, not righteousness, not God's righteousness, your desires. If it feel good, it is good. No. If it feel good, it should be good, but if it don't feel good, it should it, it might not necessarily be good just because it feel good, right? Cake tastes good. I bought my, my, it was my wife's birthday a couple of days ago. I bought her this nice white cake. Happy birthday. Right? Shoot. Between her and my granddaughter and my youngest boy, they didn't tow that cake up in a couple of days, right? <laughs> but the point is, if, if that's all you eating is cake every day, tastes good, but eventually you're going to have a problem on your hands. Beloved, let's encourage our people. Let's encourage them. Let's don't judge them. 
Some of our people are doing some real bad stuff out there. I know they are. And it's easy to judge them. It's easy to say, look at you. Right? I used to do it. I used to do it. I used to see some of these cats standing in front of 7-Eleven at the gas station asking for money. And I used to just, look at you. You just want to get over on me. I'm better than you because I got a job. I used to think like that, like a effing idiot. I'm better than you. I got a job. I got a home to go to. I got a wife. I, I used to think I was better than that man that's begging. But, man, God just kept working on me and working on me and working on me. And I finally realized I ain't no better than this man. This man just ran into some circumstances, and he decided that, hey, I'm not going to call on God and wait on God's changing hand. I'm not going to wait on God. I'm going to take, take matters into my own hands. That's the only difference. Whereas I will wait on God. I will, I will sit. If it's not my time, I'm going to sit. But I don't want to be caught outside of God's uh, word. I don't want to be, <laughs> thanks, Sister Annie. I don't, don't want to be caught outside of God's word, right? That's where we should be, man. That's where our fear should be. See, fear is not a bad thing. It's only the person that's using the fear, their intention on using that fear, right? God will use fear to motivate us to do things. Hey, you don't want to be in the wrong place. You don't want to be on the opposite side of me. So don't do this, right? This may have some severe consequences. And because why, why do you have to use fear? Let me break this down and then we're going to go. We're going to get out of here. Why does God have to use fear? Or why does a parent have to use fear? Why? Because the person that you put the fear in may not be able to mentally understand the dangers of what's maybe ha what may happen to them if they involve themselves in this behavior. They may not be able to put that all together. They only can see the fun they're going to have getting involved with this type of behavior because they think that it's fun. They don't see the risk. They don't see the danger. They don't see the bad consequences. that can They don't see none of that. It becomes an ego with them. I want to do what I want to do. Do y'all know some people like that? <laughs> me and this, me and this lady down here, Sister Annie, and Brother Anderson, we are kind of like that, right? We're Tauruses. <laughs> Clans, we don't go for that. We don't go for that. Uh, 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 uh. Astrological thing. I really don't either, but I just noticed that Tauruses are like that. I, I I just noticed that the most Tauruses are once their mind is made up. I don't care if it's a good decision, a bad decision, whatever it is. Once their mind made up, they're going. Right, <laughs> they're going. I know that because I'm a Taurus myself, and I've seen other Tauruses. Right, but y'all know somebody like that. But I this world teaches our children to not listen to us as parents. Teach, teaches our wives not to listen to us as husbands, right? Girl, he's controlling you, girl. He's telling you, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. He's controlling you, girl, right? Teaches us as men not to listen to our wives, Right? Me and Sister Any married. I, we go down to the car lot, right? Sis, Sister Any got a degree in finance, right? She telling me, Clarence, this is a bad deal. Let's go somewhere else. I'm like, no, I, I want this Maserati. I'm going to get this Maserati. But Clarence, they're charging you 23, 28.99% interest, Clarence. You finna have a $800 payment. And if you miss it, they're going to tack on an extra $300 to the payment, late fee, late charge. Clarence, let's get out of here. I'm like, no, it is. We, we, I'm, I'm, getting my, I'm getting this Maserati. That's stupid. That's stupid. We got to have the humility 
part of being listening to following God's word is having humility. We got to have humility for the things we don't understand. Right? So I buy the car anyway. Now I'm paying $1,100 a month for this car. You know, uh, the, 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 the payment plus the insurance. I'm paying $1,100 a month for this car. Right? I'm sitting here going, that was stupid. Why did I even do that? God, why'd you let me do that? I'm the one that sent you any. Any was the one with the, she was right there. She was my representative right there with you, but you didn't want to listen to her because she got a vagina. And, and your ego wouldn't let you listen to her. That's why you in this situation. And when, when any tell me, oh, okay, Clarence, I know we splitting everything, but since you wanted that car, you pay that. That's you. You pay that. <laughs> uh, well, I thought you were going to help me with the car. He said, I'm not driving that car. You driving it. So you can go ahead and pay that. You can go ahead and pay the, the insurance and taxes and all that on that car. See, we got to have our minds open enough to realize that God has sent us somebody, a representative. Right? They may, your wife may be, rep, you know, your, your God, your wife may be God's representative at different times to push back on something to make you think about it. Huh? You hearing what I'm saying, family? Being in leadership is not only being strong enough to make a decision, but also being humble enough to listen to anybody, listen to your wife, the person that care about you, or any other person that care about you, listen to their pushback <clears throat> because they may, may may have seen something that you haven't seen. Huh? They may have your wife, your wife may have saw something in this situation that you may not have seen. But if you want it so bad that you're willing to overlook her advice or his advice, your husband's advice. Nah, baby, I don't think you should go down to uh, Barbados with the girls. That sounds like it's going to be some trouble. Well, they just said we were just going to drink and skydive. And I don't think so. And if you really want to do it that bad, hell, save some money with me. We'll go together. Right? Maybe your husband sees something in your girls that your girls will get you caught up in something down there. Right? Just this a thought, family. This a thought. But our people are out here. They're out here suffering. So let's try to go out there and say a good word. You don't have to stand out there, talk to them for a half an hour and 30 minutes. Like, but I mean, you know. If you get a chance and you can safely talk to them in an open and place that's, you ain't got to worry about getting pulled out of there or, or attacked or nothing, maybe you might want to drop a word. Not so much talking to the ladies. I mean, you know, they got a safety issue that they got to deal with. But us as fellas, do men be, like the Quran said, do men think they will be left alone on saying we believe and not be tried? We're going to be tried out here, fellas. We're going to be tried. We say we believe in God, and we want, we're going to get tried. You heard the story Bolo said? <laughs> Man threw his food away. <laughs> we're going to get tried. I know Bolo wanted to run out of the car and just grab the dude right by the neck, right? He's like, damn, we're going to eat that, right? But he didn't, right? Because he understand our people are crazy, man. They're not, they're not themselves. They've been hit on the head and left on the road of life for dead. Nobody wants to talk. They're so funky and nasty. Nobody wants to talk to them. But the good Samaritan, the good Samaritan, right? He's the one that helped the traveler on the road, right? That's you and me. We traveling, right? We traveling. We trying to tra we trying to get from this whip a wicked place to a godly place. 
in spirit, in body, in soul. We traveling. We forever traveling. Somebody helps us and let us know, hey, because you've been robbed of your raiment. Your raiment, how you dress, how you used to dress, you, you've been robbed. You've been hit over the head. You don't even remember how you used to be. You used to be somebody of integrity. You used to be a man and woman of integrity, a man and woman of morality. But you've been hit over the head by this wicked society. You don't even know, you don't even remember who you was. So somebody had to come and teach you. Somebody got to come and teach you who you are and remind you, hey, get the, you got amnesia. You're God's people. They're God's people. So family, let's don't judge our people. Let's try to just give them the information. Clarence, you ain't going to change nobody. I ain't listening to you. They ain't going to change. I know they probably not immediately. Most people you come up to and you start talking to them about God, they ain't going to say, hey, man, you right. Where's the nearest church? I'm gonna, And they're going to start running that way. That, that, that's, that's typically not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're so involved in their day-to-day -day survival, man. They're not going to stop and, uh, you know, say, yeah, you right, man. Can you point me out of church right now? They're not, they're not going to do that. They're typically going to take what you said, and it's, it's going to be written down in their original paper. They'll have it in their head. And later on, somebody, I talk to this person. Later on, somebody, Bolo, maybe a year later, will talk to that person, and it'll connect with what I said, and it, it'll start sprouting something in their head. And at a certain point in time, they'll say, you know what? Look at me. I can do way better than this. The one brother told me, the other brother told me, and now look at me. But, but look at me. I think what I'm going to do is go back to my father's house. Right? I'm going to go find out about my father. Right? I didn't even know I had a father. Yeah, you father. Yeah, you got a father. And many people tried to tell you about father. You didn't want to know about him. <laughs> Bro, uh, Brother Vaughn said, uh, Bro, see, I'm so glad that uh, you reproached this topic. I know you spoke about it on your last stream. So glad you brought it up again today. It was most of it. Thank you, Vaughn. Appreciate you, brother. And I hope you're feeling a lot better, man. Hope you and your family are feeling a lot better. Yeah. But this work is hard. This work is hard. What did Jesus say? The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few, right? Nobody want to get out into that field. What's the field? The world, the gas stations, the 7-Elevens, the wherevers, the supermarkets, wherever these people are. Jesus said, come with me. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Yeah, you fishing. You 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 guys are fishing down here, but I'm going to make you guys fishers of men. What's that mean, fishers of men? I mean, we, we gonna, some we're going to keep, right? Just like any other fisherman. Get the catch. You some you keep it, some you throwing back. Right? Your job is just throw the net out there. My job is to just tell my story, tell my testimony. Whether they come, it's not. Clarence is gonna be found. I hope now let me see. I hope they come. I hope they I hope they at some point it 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 resonates with them. I'm being sincere with my testimony, but I just know the reality realistically. The average person ain't going to hear you telling your testimony and be like, hey, yeah, you're right. I'm a, with, uh, the nearest church is down there, and they just start sprinting down there. That's not going to happen. Most likely what's going to happen is they're going to hear you, think about it for maybe six months, a year. It's going Somebody else going to say something, go connect up with them, and then connect up with what you said to them, and then that may spark something in them. That may spark them to at least take a look and say, hmm. That brother seemed at peace. He didn't look like he had a million dollars, but he looked like he was more at peace than a person, a brother that have a million dollars. All right, family, I went on and on and on, didn't I? <laughs> Beloved, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you. Hopefully you got something out of this. If we said something, hope you out of it. But remember this. 
We got some things coming up. We got to feed some people this year. We got to get some backpacks this year. And we also got to get the Urban Warrior Academy Inc. going. We got to get that going. So we still putting in time for all of that. Shout out to Reese Neal. We, 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 we still putting in time for all of that. So family, we got a lot going on. We got a lot going on. So help us in any way you can. If you could just even share, maybe I, you don't have no money to help. Okay, that's fine. But if you could just share, you just share what we uh, share our videos to try to help. Who knows, man? Something one of us said might have inspired somebody to change their whole life, right? Because all we said is the truth. All we saying is the truth. All right, family, that's it. So uh, let me do the rundown real quick, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, shout out to the chat. The chat's where it's at. Uh, good job in the chat. Everybody did a great job in the chat today. Shout out to Risa. Shout out to all the mods. Great job. Everybody did a great job in the chat. There's never no foolishness going on in the chat. And we have, we, 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 we have, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, we have found the code or found the key, man. We don't have issues. We can tell the truth and it's not a big problem. Uh, shout out to the chat. Chat's where it's at. Very strong performance from the chat. Very solid. Who else was on here today? Uh, we had Brother Bolo. We had Scam Likely. We had Sister Any. We had Vagoda. And we had Scorched Earth. Shout out to all of them for stopping by. We appreciate all of them. They all did a great job. Very solid performances by everyone. Everyone did a great job. Knocked it out of the park. Even with the pushback, it was very respectful. Everybody was cool. Um, shout out to Scorched Earth. I think this is his first time over here, man. So shout out to him. Glad to have you over here. Maiden Voyage, Scorched Earth did an outstanding job. Good brother, man. Uh, so uh, this is what we're going to do, y'all. Uh, yeah, everybody did a, a strong performance. Uh, shout out Sister Henny, Black Brother Clan. All right, so this is what we're going to do, y'all. We're going to regroup from Whoop Whoop, and we're going to be back. Uh, we'll see, man. You know, they got your boy out there. I'm I'm actually out there uh, doing, the, uh, you know, feet on the ground you know what i mean so uh i'm doing that work that was uh woo, that's hard but uh you know hopefully man my body gets used to it and i build up uh strong and so uh maybe we may be back on thursday i don't know about saturday i might have to go to my father-in-law's house but we definitely may be back on thursday definitely we'll be here on sunday but uh thursday is a hit or miss we'll, we'll check it out but tell me, guys, tell me, guys, in the chat, how'd you like Bolo coming over here? How did you? What did you think about that? What did you think about his breakdown? Right? Thought it was awesome, as always. Most of the time, we agree. Sometimes we don't agree, but sometimes, but most of the time, we do agree. Most of the time, we 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 do agree on on the position of uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I agree with him in his position, right? But uh, one thing about our relationship is strong enough where we don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to agree. Oh, shout to scam likely. Did I say? Oh yeah, I, I did say scam. Um, all right. So uh just say we'll go to yeah, so we'll go to all right. Uh yeah, everybody did great and uh everybody did great. Uh, but maybe me and Bolo will uh get together and not maybe, excuse me. We will get together and uh do this again because I know there's a need for it, but I just know that a lot of people don't want to hear it because uh it's gonna kind of put a kibosh on the way they live in, but <laughs> it's time for the kibosh to come, right? <laughs> we not judges. We just dropping information. All right. All right, family. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.